wanted to go for the win and wanted to lay it on the line. We did. Welcome to the NDSU 1993 season opener. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Community First Bank, Chrysler Jeep Eagle, your quality Buick dealers, Stop and Go, Subway, ABC Seamless, Nodak Mutual, your Northland Ford dealers, Shields, Pella Windows, Selland Motors, Dairy Queen, Arctic Cat, your Dodge dealers, and First Bank Systems. North Dakota State and Pittsburgh State are the strongest Division II football programs in America. Tonight, they open the 1993 season against each other. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Live from the new Fargo Dome, it's the North Dakota State season opener. I'm Dan Hammer, along with Ed Kendall, the sports director at KFYR-TV, and an old good friend of ours, former Bison head coach Don Morton. And Don, there's a lot of electricity in this building tonight, isn't there? Yes, a lot of electricity, a lot of crowd excitement, the game, the Bison. What a night. Ed, you've heard it from both coaches. It's been difficult to keep the players away from all the buildup that this game has received. Yeah, it sure has, and the coaches have kind of downplayed this. This isn't a big game. Once you walk on the field and you hear this crowd, it becomes a pretty big ball game. Well, this rivalry has grown quickly. Pittsburgh State and North Dakota State met for the first time in 1990 in Fargo. North Dakota State won that game 39-29. Pitt State won last year in overtime in the playoffs in Pittsburgh. And that's the kind of momentum that these two teams have set up for this rematch tonight. Number 22, and who's going to speak for home team? Number three. Okay, heads or tails while it's in the air, please. Head. Heads, he has called. It is tails. That will give you a choice. You wish to receive. You will be kicking off. Which goal do you wish to defend? This one. Okay, if you swing around, put your backs to the goal that you're going to defend. North Dakota State has won the toss. They will re receive to begin the football game. The Bison ranked number one in the country in the NCAA Division II preseason poll. Pittsburgh State was ranked number three in that particular poll. But if you take all of the preseason polls, Don and Ed, and put them together, NDSU is number one and Pitt State is number two. So there's no question around the country that these two teams are, preseason-wise anyway, the strongest in the nation. Well, they're both very talented teams. They're coming off great seasons last year, and they have a good returning nucleus. Um, the Bison have gone through the preseason virtually injury-free. Pitt comes in this game very healthy. We're going to see one heck of a football game this evening. And this is great for college football, too. You get the good matchup from the playoffs, Sometimes you get some lopsided preseason games normally, but when you have the two best teams in the country squaring off to start the season, what more could you ask for? Well, you got to look at Chuck Broyles there, the head coach of Pitt State. Took the helm three years ago. Since then, they've won every conference championship. They've won eight straight in all. They were the national champions in 1991, and here, here come the Bison fans to their feet. We had a nice visit with Chuck this afternoon. He's a real gentleman. He gave us some good time. He's, he's done a tremendous job with that, with that program. He inherited a good program. He's made it much. He's even made it better. He's improved upon it. Pittsburgh State joined the NCAA ranks just in 1989. They had played NAIA Division I prior to that time, and <laughs> they've been an immediate impact in Division II. Well, it's kind of incredible when you think about it. Here's a power in the NAIA. They take a step up, and they've almost been more successful since moving up in Broyles three, four years here as coach. He's 39, three and one, so that's pretty impressive. You take a look at the men deep for North Dakota State. Jason Miller, number 27, Kyle Carlson, number 26, and Matt Ness, number nine. Jeff Wood, number seven, will kick it off for Pittsburgh State. The wind is not a factor this evening. <laughs> it is not. And the new era in Bison football is underway. Carlson feels it at the four. And he's tripped up at the 18. Tripped up on that play by Denny Ruth. So North Dakota State will start after good special team coverage by Pittsburgh State. Arden Beachy, the man who leads the pack for North Dakota State, preseason All-American, first team All-NCC a year ago. 
And last year, he set an NDSU school record amassing 1,966 yards. And Don, he's so versatile because of his ability to throw the football. Yes, he can do what a lot of option quarterbacks can do. He's got a touch. Option quarterbacks traditionally have good, strong arms, but they don't have much touch. He, he can throw the ball with touch. Bison go to work at the 19. DC over center. Split back. Larson and McDonald are the receivers. Sanchez is the carrier. Up across the 20-yard line, Andy Harris, second Andy Sweet, number 50, made the initial stop for Pitt State. Little inside trap up the middle just to kind of slow things down. There was a definite hole. He hit the hole good, but Pitt did a nice job of closing it off very that, quickly. That offensive line for North Dakota State, all five returning starters, including Kevin Bloom, first team NCC from a year ago and a preseason All-American this year. The running backs, Kyle Carson and Sanchez, T.R. McDonald and Larson are the receivers. The tight end is Kevin Holm, but that Bison offensive line, the most experienced unit on this football team. It is second and six. Vici down the line option. Hits the freshman Jason Miller across the 25 and across the 30 for the first down. Freshman Jason Miller from Monoman, Minnesota in his first carry as a Bison, and it's a good one for the first down. The Bison were in what they wanted to be in. They were in second and six, second and five. They take the ball to the outside. They get the perimeter. The inside is sealed off. The inside sealed up, and the pitch back does a nice job getting to the alley. Miller kind of labeled as the next great Bison running back, and he certainly showed it there, getting outside and showing his great speed. Well, Jason Miller was an all-stater at Monoman, led his team to two consecutive state championships in his junior and senior year. Monoman High School was 28-1 and over the last two years with Miller as their fine back. First and 10 for the Bison. Beachy hands off to Miller again, and this time he is tied up at the line of scrimmage. This is a little bit of a new wrinkle for the Bison, running a little bit of eye formation, a little bit of the isolation play. There was probably a little crease inside. Uh, if he runs that again, he won't miss that crease. <laughs> the stop that time made by number 44, Carlos Nevins, one of many junior college transfers, Don, that, that this Pittsburgh State squad has. Pittsburgh State uh, depends on junior college transfers, and they've had good luck with junior college transfers throughout the years. Second and nine from the 32. Double tight end this time for North Dakota State. McDonald, the receiver to the near side of the field. Down the line option. Beachy turns it off. He's got room, and he's across the 45-yard line for a first down. And there you see the excellent decision-making that Arden Beachy brings to this Bison offense. Just a, a very simple loaded type of option play. The tight end did a great job of getting the man responsible to quarterback down on the ground. That opened it up for Arden to have a, a nice run. Excellent first down play. The more you watch Beachy, the one thing I really notice is the first step or two. He's so quick getting out from underneath the center and getting that play going. First and 10 at NDSU's own 46. Flip back, Miller and Sanchez behind Beachy. Raul Sanchez with the carry. And he's brought down at the 48-yard line. Cooper Harris in on the hit for Pittsburgh State. <laughs> the Bison have to be able to run the ball inside. They want to run the ball inside. There's a nice little three-yard play. It doesn't look like much. The fans don't get excited, but that keeps the chains <laughs> moving. That's what you want to establish, isn't it, Don? Uh, you wanted to establish that when you were running this offense, and that's the same thing Rocky wants to do these days, establish the inside. Yes, that gives you consistency with your offense. The pressure's on the guards in this offense. Second and eight from the 48. North Dakota State in its opening drive. Jason Miller and Arden Beachy with two big first downs. Miller, the call inside, breaks inside the 50. And he'll be about four yards short of the first down. Chris Brown in on the stop. And Chris Brown, as a freshman free safety last year, stepped into a pressure cooker situation and did a heck of a job for Pittsburgh State. This actually becomes a defensive down now. There's, there's the defensive line of Pittsburgh State. Chris Hanna, the preseason All-American. Bradbury, Carson, Sweet, and Harris are the linebackers. On a third and five, Sanchez and Carlson split backs behind Beachy. Great drop for Beachy. Gets away from the initial rush, and he dives for the first down. 
Harden beats it, creating his own opportunity there, eluding the initial rush and diving for the first down inside the 45-yard line. This is what an option quarterback can do for you in your drop-back passing game. It's a three-step drop-back passing game. It's a quick passing game, but he has the speed to make something happen when things break down. That's just a great individual effort by Arden. And that NDSU offensive line taking care of business there. Brad Service and Dave Fuchs on a double team, creating that gap for Arden Beachy. The Bison continue their opening drive. 10.30 remaining first quarter. Sanchez and Miller put back behind Arden Beachy. Twin receivers to the near side. Beachy picks up immediately. Chance Rudnick did a great job defensively for Pitt State to get an initial hand on Arden Beachy. Uh, Pitt is going to start doing some things on defense. They're going to start coming with some secondary things, and Arden did a good job of hobbling away from the stunt. They've got the right play. They just get a little bit of penetration up front, and uh, credit Pitt with making a great play. Lost the one on the play. NDSU faces a second and 11 from the Pitt 45. Larson to the near side, the receiver for North Dakota State. T.R. McDonald, the preseason American, preseason American on the far side. Miller and Carlson split back. Beachy rolls out near side. He's got Damon Larson inside the 35, and he'll be about two yards short of the first down. Freshman Damon Larson out of West Fargo making his first catch as a bison. This is uh, quite a wrinkle with option football where... Arden comes down the line of scrimmage, and it is a pass-run option. He's got the, the option to run the ball. He's got the option to pass the ball. And he was going to pass, and he was going to run, and then he ended up passing the ball. You know, when really you watch, puts the pressure to defense. When you watch Beachy plays like that, it seems second nature, commonplace, but he's already made two or three exceptional plays that very few quarterbacks in the nation could make to keep this drive going. And with Beachy, Rocky was asked, are you going to throw more? Rocky said, you know, there are a lot of games where we have a lot of passes called, but Arden makes the right decision to not throw the football and do other things with it. Split back, Beachy and Sanchez, or Sanchez and Carlson, and Beachy turns it up, and he has the first down. Raul Sanchez laid a beautiful block in to allow Arden Beachy another first down on NDSU's opening drive. Here comes replay. You'll see the tight end does a great job. Look at him getting the outside linebacker off the line of scrimmage, back off the line, uh, four or five yards. Great job by the tight end. That was Raul Sanchez. And, you know, blocking in this offense is so important. I mean, the receivers, the first thing you ask of a receiver in this offense is to block. Yes, in particular, your tight ends in your option team. That was a tremendous job by Raul. Here's a new look for the Bison recently. Three backs now behind Beachy. He turns it up and gains about three on the play. So the Bison move inside the Pittsburgh State 30-yard line with 8.15 remaining in the first quarter. This is NDSU's initial drive of the game. Arden shows his experience. He knows they're in four-down territory. He knows he doesn't have to make the big play. Just stay away from the big mistake. Get two or three yards. You're in four-down territory. Be patient. A veteran quarterback making a veteran play. Don, we've seen North Dakota State and Pittsburgh State with that inverted wishbone. We'll see that out of the gorillas. New wrinkles into this option offense for both of these football teams in the last few years. Sanchez and Carlson split back behind Beachy. Larson in motion on a second and seven at the 28. Beachy gives the inside handoff to Kyle Carlson, and he's down to the 25-yard line. This is uh, an, uh, just a very well-run offensive series. Now it's, it's third and four. This is an offensive down because it's four-down territory. Again, look at the, the left guard getting the movement off the line of scrimmage. The left guard is the guy that makes this play. It'll bring up a third and four. And as you see, no wind here in the Fargo <laughs> Dome. Scott, Scott <laughs> Fuchs just did a tremendous job, one-on-one. -on -one. Another third down for NDSU. A third and four from the 25-yard line. And NDSU wants a timeout. You're watching Bison Football on NBC. Hey, we know you're busy and can't worry about the best time to buy a car, but here's a clue. The Jeep and Eagle Clearance, unlike any other because it's on great vehicles like Jeep Grand Cherokee or this award winner, Eagle Vision. And we're not shouting, but we got to tell you, here's a good price on a talent. And this summit's looking sweet. 
So take a time out. You can save a lot of money here. The Jeep and Eagle clearance. Worth looking into. Hey, we'll see you there. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer today. There really are only two types of free checking. Commonly free and community free. Commonly free checking can be found virtually anywhere. Very, very common. Community free checking with great free features and the best in community banking is available only here at Community First National Bank of Fargo. Of the two, we recommend the free checking that's less common and more community. Community free checking from Community First National Bank of Fargo. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Far Good Home. Dan Hammer, John Morton, and Ed Kendall. NDSU's opening drive of the game has reached the Pitt State 25-yard line. Third and four. Don, Very you're playing the guessing game here. Let us know what's going through your mind. Well, I think the Bison coach are thinking they've got two downs. If they get real close on fourth down, they'll go for it. If they don't, they'll kick the field goal. They're in great shape. Three backs behind Beachy. Carlson now goes in motion. Beachy down the line option, turns it up, and he is stopped short of the first down and a fine defensive play by inside linebacker Cooper Harris. Again, Pitt did a good job of coming off the edge and forcing Beachy inside, and they had some pursuit. The Pitt defense made a good play. They practiced too. First big decision for the North Dakota State coaching staff. Any surprise? They're going for it. Fourth and a little bit long. The Rockies got a lot of confidence in the offense line, and they have controlled this, this series. It's a good decision. Beachy now wanting for a little more climb in the dome so his offensive team can hear the snap count. It's Miller and Raul they're Sanchez. They're going to come in the short side. Of the oh, they're going to go on the long side. The pitch is to Jason Miller, <laughs> far side of the field. He's got the first down inside the 10. Touchdown, North Dakota State. We'll see the replay. We'll see the tight end on left side. I believe that's Kevin Holm. We'll see Kevin Holm make a great block on the second. They came with the secondary stunt. They had the best defense for this play. The tight end makes a key block out there in the safety. Great job by the quarterback getting to the pitch. And we have a bison score. Jason Miller, 24 yards out. Ludwig Milfor is in for the point after, and it is good. North Dakota State marches nearly the length of the field on its opening drive, and the Bison lead it 7 0. Don't miss the Labor Day sale at Wallwork Ford. Over $6 million of new and used cars and trucks in stock, and they're all on sale from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. only. Check the zero-down deals on air-conditioned Tempo GLs. 35 in stock from $84.93. And air-conditioned Escort LX is 80 in stock starting from $94.93. Or pick from 125 used cars and trucks. They start at $199. Top dollar trade allowance and on-the-spot financing, too. All at the no-money-down $6 million 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Labor Day sale at Wallwork, your regional Ford dealer. The health plan of the future is here. Select Choice from Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota. Select Choice, designed to save money today and tomorrow for employers and employees. Select Choice from Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota. The future is here. Classic option play. I thought they were going to come to the short side of the field. The quarterback did a great job getting to the pitch. Pitt probably, uh, they had the, the guy that's supposed to have the pitch went to quarterback, and Arden did a great job of just executing his basic option read. The tight end had the key block on the safety, Kevin Holmes. And that's exactly what you don't want if you're with the Gorillas. You're down 7 nothing. Your defense has already been on the field for nine minutes. You've got the specifics of the scoring drive for the Bison. 14 plays, they go 81 yards, quite impressive. Again, Miller caps it off, 24 yards, time of possession, 8.54. Ludwig Milfors kicks the way for North Dakota State. And Sean Scott sees it bounce into the end zone. So Pittsburgh State will take over at its own 20-yard line. Well, we talked about Jason Miller somewhat at the outset. One of the most highly recruited players in Northwest Minnesota a couple years ago. When he was in his senior year, led Menomen to the prep bowl, 
at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in the Class C State Championship game. He rushed for 252 yards. The guy loves running on the carpet. <laughs> and it shows. Brian Hutchins, the quarterback of Pitt State. He is their glue to this offense. Hutchins brings his team to the line. Down the line option. Hutchins keeps it himself, and he has a big opening up near the 35-yard line. The Bison want to establish the inside right away. Pitt wants to establish the corner. They want to get around the defense, and this is this is what they want to get established right now. They do a good job getting around the edge. This is what the, the Bison defensive coaches are concerned most about, is getting around the quarterback and around the corner that fast. Brian Hutchins, the six-foot senior from Pittsburgh, Kansas. Joey Tobin and Sean Scott, the running back. Ooh. And this time again, Hutchins on the option, turns it across the 40-yard line to about the 42. Eric Hagerly, North Dakota State's free safety, in on the stop. And Hagerly is a preseason All-American. And Brian Hutchins, you see him there. The pressure is on the outside linebackers for North Dakota State. Uh, they have got to handle the tight ends. The tight ends are the best blockers on the pit team. They're the best offensive linemen. That's the key matchup. Second and four, and there was a flag on the play. The Bison defensive coaches, their worst fears are coming forth right now in that those first two plays. Illegal procedure on Pitt State. That'll back them up five yards. Dead ball. Both they'll start, face a second and eight. Replay first down. Here's the offensive line for Seven. Pittsburgh State, led by Doug Bullard in the middle, the center. He's been starting since his freshman year. The backs, Joey Tobin and Sean Scott. The wide receiver, Shad Kling. The tight ends, Paul Sparkman and Jason Gardner in the double tight end sets for the Gorillas. Second and eight. And again, flags fly as Hutchins came to center. And another illegal procedure call. So after two productive offensive plays by the Gorillas, they're hit with two consecutive procedure calls, and now they'll be facing a second of 14 and in a hole. And Pitt State, much like NDSU. Ball, ball start on the offense. Replay the down. Not a passing team. Don't want to get in second, 15, third, and 15, third, and 10. Yeah, these are not offensive downs. The defense is their game right now. Scott and Tobin split backs behind Hutchins. Hutchins gives the pitch to Scott. Hegley got a shot at him, but Scott eluded that tackle and dances down the near sidelines and the flag at the end of the play. Maybe a late hit on North Dakota State. Speed is a marvelous. The Bison have this play de de defended. It's it should be a dead play. This young man has tremendous acceleration. He turns what is a should be a, a loss into a positive play. Don Scott, all six foot three and 208 pounds of him. 15 yard late hit call on North Dakota State. The defensive line for the Bison. Jen Bagman, Steve Hansen, and Bruce Yegi is the nose guard. The linebackers, Hunzak, Moser, Basons, and Jones. We talked to Coach Secondary, Carlson, Ness, Moses, and Hagerly. What a big penalty that is. It moves the ball inside the North Dakota State territory. Pitt State goes to work at the 42. Hutchins has split backs behind him on a first and 10. Hutchins down the line option, pitches to Scott. Can he get the corner? He's dragged out as Tim Jacobson was able to just push him out of bounds and, and keep Scott from getting that corner good defensive play. Sean Scott holds the record for 100 meters at Pitt. He runs about a 10-5, 100 meters. <laughs> he does have excellent speed. This is a good play by the Bison defense. Gets off a block, makes a play. When we asked Coach Boyles to describe Scott, he said, kind of looks like Eric Dickerson. Tall, 6'3", almost 210 pounds, and he's right. Runs a lot like him, too. He's got all the tools. He's just a little bit unproven right now, and that's what the coaches will be looking at through the first few games of him. Jeff Moreland, Split number six, the former quarterback, inside carry to Scott, and he's dragged down in the play at the 35-yard line. 
That's an interesting story. Number six, Jeff Moreland on the field. Former quarterback. In fact, this team very deep in quarterbacks because of injuries. Not only is Brian Hutchins the starter tonight, a veteran starter, but so is Jeff Moreland, number six, and also Brian Hafter, who they have on their football team. I think that's one of the pluses of being an option team. You recruit all these option quarterbacks. They've got the speed and athletic, but they play a lot of spots for your football team. Third and three, and here comes the crowd. Let's see what kind of factor they are in the third down situation. Hutchins inside give to Joey Tobin, and he stopped shy of the first down. Dan, you talked about the crowd, and Coach Boyle told us that the crowd really becomes a factor when you get inside the 40, the 30, the 20 as you get closer to the end zone. Steve Hansen and Tate Mosier in on the stop for North Dakota State. Steve Hansen, the younger brother of Phil Hansen, the former All-American and starting defensive lineman for the Buffalo Bills. Pittsburgh State will go for it. Fourth and one at the North Dakota State 33-yard line. I would say they're going to try to come to left here. Which they do. Hutchins turns it up. He has the first down. So Brian Hutchins gives Pittsburgh State a first down to keep its first possession going. They want to run at their uh, to their left. They want to run to the their best tight end in this very key down, and that's exactly what they did. Their tight end is, is uh, doing a great job right now. If you look at Hutchins, he doesn't look real fast or real quick, but he sure gets around the corner in a hurry. Yeah, he's deceiving. If you look at him, he you wouldn't think he's dangerous, but he makes the right decision. That's his biggest asset with this offense. Split backs, Scott and Tobin behind Hutchins. First and ten. The pitch to Joey Tobin. Carlson is there to slow him up. A nice job at Tobin to get a few more yards, though, after the initial hit by Sean Carlson. The Bison have changed their defensive front a little bit to give some help to the outside linebacker on the tight end side. Well, we've had only two possessions to this point, and there's only 2.25 remaining in the first quarter. North Dakota State take the opening drive and scored on a Jason Miller 24-yard touchdown. Now the Gorillas facing a second and three. From the 23. Hutchin turns it up. He's got two lead blockers in front of him. He's inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. Two blockers in front of Brian Hutchins, and he springs them inside the 10. Joey Tobin, a running back, and also Jeff Moreland leading the way for Brian Hutchins. Again, the key is their tight end, number 86, Paul Sparkman. They feel he's their best offensive lineman. He's a tight end, but he's their best offensive lineman. He's their best blocker. And he's the guy they're going to go to in these key situations. First and goal at the nine. That's Moreland giving Hutchins a signal. Jabarco Gaines in the game now. The running back, number 41 for Pitt State. Tobin gives the handoff, and there was movement there. There was movement. This is going to be a break for the Bison. Right tackle. That's a break for the Bison, as you said, Don. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Replay, first down. First and goal from the 14. 12th play of the drive for Pittsburgh State. Started on their own 20-yard line. They go to work now. First and goal at the Bison 14. Gaines and Tobin split backs behind Hutchins. Moreland split left, Kling is wide to the left. Hutchins turns it up and inside the 10. Is Coach, Brian Hutchins. Coach Wales told us in his offense, they like to get the ball to the backs. Their quarterbacks won't rush for as many yards as, say, NDSU quarterbacks, but Hutchins is sure proving us wrong so far. He's picked up a lot of yardage on this drive. John, you touched on it in NDSU's possession, but the philosophy is a little bit different in terms of what these teams want to do with the offense, isn't it? Where yes. they want to establish yep. something. Pitt definitely wants to get the ball around the edge, around, around the outside. They want to get to Pitt. The Bison will be a little bit more patient. Gaines and Tobin are the backs. The give is to Tobin. Up the middle, and he's stuck. Jeff Hagman in on the stop for North Dakota State. Got some help from Punzak and Mosier on the play. And Pitt State will face a third and goal 
from the seven. Gain of two yards on that play. We might see Pitt throw the ball for the first time this evening. This would be the down. <laughs> Looks to throw, scrambles now near side, and he's got his man at the one yard line. Guy of the goal line, it is Michael Munch, a transfer student from Columbia University in New York with the reception inside the one. Good coverage. The Bison have good coverage. They, the quarterback's forced out of the pocket. He's got the speed to make something happen. Buys time for a receiver to get open. This is tough. That's, there's a lot of pressure on the defense when the quarterback runs on like that. Now I would think we're going to hear the 18,800 roar because Pitt State facing a fourth and goal. They want a timeout. We'll break away and return to the Fargo Dome right after this. Buick, the car company that wrote the book on quality, closes the books on all remaining 93s. Buick Century. Reliable, comfortable. It's the Buick with a big car ride at a little car price. Airbag, air conditioning, power door locks, and direct-to-you cashbacks. Century gets better fuel economy than Accord, Camry, Taurus, or Sable. Direct-to-you cashbacks and dealer discounts. Get into your nearest quality Buick dealer and save right now. When you're in a hurry, not much time, you don't want to hassle with the checkout line, then get yourself together and just stop and go. For the gas and the goodies, even the videos. Get a mug for the club and the coffee is free. And the rest is fast too, as you'll see. Well, Chuck Broyles, that is quite a winning percentage. 39, 3 and 1 in three years, and he's a he's a likable kind of guy. Yeah, he sure is. We had a chance to spend some time with him today. Something more incredible for Pitt State. The last 79 regular season games, they've got 77 wins. It is fourth and goal inside the one for the Gorillas. And Pitt State jumped offside. A critical, critical error inside the one. I think they've got to kick it now. Great tackle again. So instead of a fourth and goal inside the one, replay fourth down. It'll be a fourth and goal from the six. And Pittsburgh State will go for the field goal. Todd Hasler, the holder. Jeff Woods in to attempt a 20 two-yard field goal from the near hash. It is up, and it is good. Pittsburgh State in its opening drive denied to the touchdown, but Wood gets the field goal. It's North Dakota State 7, Pitt State 3. Precision craftsmanship. It's usually found in the world's finest furniture, or windows made by Pella. Windows so well crafted, so energy efficient. They don't just meet industry standards, but often exceed them substantially. Quality like this only comes from Pella. Are you power hungry? Then you better hurry to your local Jeep and Eagle dealers year-end clearance because the 93 four-wheel drive Jeep Grand Cherokees are available with a V8 engine at no extra charge. This is your best chance to get a Grand Cherokee with a 220 horsepower V8, 6,500 pound towing capacity, and standard driver side airbag at huge savings. But you'd better act fast because when these powerful V8s are gone, so are these powerful savings. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer for the best in automotive sales, service, and value. Well, we have 11 seconds left in the first quarter. Each offense has touched the ball once. Pitt State just went 74 yards in 13 plays. Jeff Wood caps it off with a 23-yard field goal after NDSU had taken in the opening drive of the game, 81 yards, and scored on Jason Miller's 24-yard touchdown. This really shouldn't be surprising. The two times these teams have played before, very high scoring, and most people who predicted the outcome of this game also predicted a high-scoring affair. 
The rule changes, a couple of interesting rule changes this year in Division II. One is that all fumbles are advanceable. The second is that the hash marks have been moved in. Both of those rule changes really affect option football teams greatly, don't they, Don? Yes, and you saw Pitt really take advantage of the hash mark rule change. They put unbalanced in the, what used to be the short side of the field, which as the hash marks move in, it's not such a short side of the field anymore. <laughs> And they, uh, the Bison will adjust that. Leo Ringy is, uh, they're making some adjustments right now. But they really got hurt on unbalanced into the short side of the field. And then Pitt did a nice job of coming back to the short, back to the wide side of the field. There you see Jeff Wood, the Pitt State kicker. Back deep for North Dakota State are Kyle Carlson, Jason Miller, number 27 is Miller. Ness, number nine, Matt Ness out of Barnesville, Minnesota, along with Kyle Carlson. I thought there wasn't any wind in here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the collective sigh of relief from the 18,800 fans who probably thought Pitt State was going to tie the game after being fourth and goal from a foot. Woods kick, wanders near the near sideline, and now North Dakota State has an option. They could take the ball at the 35-yard line. Which looks like they're going to do. As their offensive unit comes on the field. So the Bison will take over good field position after that Jeff Wood quick one out of bounds. Boy, what a couple of memorable meetings these two football teams have played. 1990 in the playoffs at Dakota Field, 39-29 in favor of the Bison. They went on to win the national championship. And then last year in Pittsburgh, Kansas, in overtime, Pitt State beat North Dakota State 38-37. So I'll tell you, when it was announced that Pitt State was coming to Fargo for the dome opener, that's when the mildup of this game started. NDSU's second offensive possession starts at its own 35. BG over center, Brad Service, Sanchez, and Carlson are the split backs. The give is inside to Raul Sanchez over across the 40-yard line, but he's knocked down on the play there by Brian Carson, number 37, one of the cornerbacks. This is the basic Bison offense right here. Zone blocking up front, a nice job by the people up front, and the back cuts it back. It's second and five. You're in your game plan. First quarter complete from the Fargo Dome. It's North Dakota State 7 and Pittsburgh State 3. When we had Miranda, I realized how important it was to have solid life insurance plans. Because Mark and I both contribute to her financial security, we wanted the best coverage possible. That's why we called our NODAC mutual agent. The same agent we've trusted with our home and auto insurance helped us with our most important investment of all, her future. NODAC mutual, to help plan for a secure future. It's a little bit country where hot and cool connect. Hot eats, cool treats at Dairy Queen. There's real country cooking at Dairy Queen. The chicken strip country basket, now only $2.99. Four golden strips of chicken, all white breast meat, moist and tender. Crispy fries, Texas toast, and country gravy. The Dairy Queen chicken strip country basket, just $2.99. Y'all drop in for lunch or dinner. Hot eats, cool treats, we treat you right. Sanchez picked up five yards on that first down play, and we begin the second quarter, and that experienced MDSU offensive line has uh, made an impression early in this game, hasn't it, Don? That offensive line is really controlling things up front. They're really getting some tremendous movement. Larson and McDonald, far side of the field, receivers for North Dakota State. Miller and Sanchez are the split backs behind Beachy. Beachy down the line. Reverse to McDonald. He's got Fuchs in front of him. Fuchs laid a block on Brown, but Brown did a nice job to hold the ground and be able to make the play and the tackle on T.R. McDonald. You'll see a, a very good pit defensive team react. You'll see what speed and quickness does for your defensive team. The Bison have a good play. It's a well-designed play. It has them fooled, but their quickness allows them to get back. Chris Brown with the tack. Chris Brown with the tackle there. He's probably the biggest hitter in that secondary there. On these outside plays like this, Bloom is just going to get a chance to just tee off on the guy. He's not really going to be a big factor. Just don't allow penetration. Third and about one for North Dakota State. 
Put back, double tight end for the Bison. Beachy has got the big seam. He's inside the 40. Arden Beachy with the first down and more, and NDSU continues to gobble up yards against the Gorilla defense. This, again, look at look at Bloom. Woo. Look at Bloom and the right tackle getting the movement that they get. Bloom and Rose. Now, here's an example of what the inside running game has done for the It's really opened up for the quarterback outside. Well, I tell you, that offensive line, not only did they get the initial surge, they pushed those defensive linemen about five yards back on that play. Larson and McDonald down to the near side of the field for North Dakota State. Sanchez and Carlson are the backs behind Arden Beachy. Looks like the North Dakota State line moves. That pass complete to Larson. He's inside the 30-yard line. Down to about the 27. Chris Brown coming up from his free safety position to make the stop. This is a run-pass option or pass-run option. They look for the pass. If the pass isn't there, he is going to take the ball and run. This is uh, ultimate option football. Well, Arden Beachy online to become the top passer ever at North Dakota State in terms of percentage. This is a nicely thrown ball going to his left, well executed. Beachy has completed 65% of his passes in his career. Threw for 1,300 yards last year in that season in which he accounted for 1,966 total yards. This time, Nagita's Raul Sanchez inside the 30-yard line before the wave of Pitt State Gorilla defenders knock him back. But that'll be good enough for a first down for the Bison. This is a nice wrinkle for the Bison offense to be able to run a little bit of isolation play like this. Just great power football. It's something their offense line obviously can handle very well. Really complements the option game for them. Well, they're referred to as the Rams. I think they referred to as the Rams back when you had your staff at North Dakota State, and they're putting their horns into this The defense, Rams are getting they? the job done. <laughs> this is awful hard in the defense. Double tight end for the Bison on a first and 10 from the 23. Miller and Carlson are the split back. Beachy down the line option. Cuts it inside the 20 and dives to about the 17-yard line. Andy Sweet, number 50, making the stop for Pittsburgh State. Pitt Pete, they have people there. Young man misses the play, misses the tackle. Arden does a great job eluding. Turns the negative play into a positive. I tell you, if you're Pittsburgh State, you're starting to think, man, our defense has got to come up with a stop here sooner or later. Two drives for North Dakota State, and they have marched down the field on both drives. After that gain of four, it's second and six for the Bison. At the 18, Sanchez and Carlson have the split back. McDonald to the near side of the field. You get a good look at Arden Beachy. Damon Larson, far side to the right for the Bison. Inside handoff, it is Carlson. And he has a good gainer near the first down. It might be about a yard shy. You're going to see an excellent trap. The right guard comes and gets a great inside out. Uh, Kevin Bloom does a nice job pulling. He makes that play. Watch the right guard get the trap right here. What a crease. You watch these Bison offensive linemen, too. When the play's over, they're three, four, five yards downfield. They're just blowing these guys off the ball. After that gate of five, it's third and less than a yard for the Bison. Three back set for North Dakota State. Sanchez, Carlson, and Miller. McDonald is split out to the near side of the field. Beachy, down the line option, cuts it up, and he has the first down. Big hit by Andy Sweet, but it came after Arden Beachy gets the first down for North Dakota State. Good. A uh, veteran quarterback knowing where the first down six are, turning upfield, getting a critical first down for down area. Picked up three on the carry, and it's first and goal just inside the 10 for North Dakota State. 10.42 remaining here in the second quarter. It's the Bison 7, Pittsburgh 3. The Bison ranked number one in the nation in the preseason. Pittsburgh State ranked number three. Double tight end set for the Bison now. Split backs are Miller and Sanchez, and Damon Larson is far to the right. And there's a timeout by North Dakota State. Beachy didn't like what he saw when he came to the line. This is a critical drive for the Bison. Uh, Arden did not want to make a mistake. There was something that was causing a little bit of confusion, so he very good decision to call the timeout. Got a couple 
Got a couple NCC scores to go over here real quick. Mankato State leading Northwest Missouri State 28-7 in the first and USC over Northern State 3-0 in the second. Well, you look at the stats, both teams very much run-oriented in the first quarter. NDSU with 77 yards rushing, Pitt State with 63, and so far neither team has turned it over. I think the game plan for the Bison on offense is going just like they planned it. Uh, establish the inside game, see if our guards can control their tackles. The Bison guards are controlling the tackles. Kevin Bloom and Scott Fuchs are controlling the people on them, and that's the important thing in the Bison inside game. And that's some real meat there. Fuchs at 6'6", 300 pounds from Minot, North Dakota. And Kevin Bloom, the Wisconsin native, at 6'2", 283 pounds. And Kevin Bloom is one of those engineering majors at North Dakota State. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about Joe Stanslale when we get a chance. <laughs> we'll do that. The dean of the engineering college will be retiring this year. Split backs behind Beachy. Miller and Sanchez on a first and goal from just inside the 10. The give is to Miller. And he is met after a gain of about a yard on the play. The initial wave of Fifth State defenders are Andy Sweet. Also in on the play is Carlos Nevin, number 44. The eye formation just hits a little bit slower than the split back, and you have to hold things a little bit longer. And Carlos, against a great defense like Pitt with this quickness they have, that's tough. Carlos Nevin's again one of the junior college players on this football team. Four of the starters defensively on Pitt State have been transfers into that program. But there are 10 junior colleges in that area of Kansas, so that's a prime recruiting ground for Chuck Doyle. Down the line option. Beachy cuts it in. He has a touchdown. Watch Kyle Carlson on this play. The running back number 26, a great kickout block. There he is. Everything was sealed off the inside, and Arden did a great job getting in the alley. Arden Beachy, 10 yards on the touchdown at North Dakota. State is two for two offensively tonight. Kevin Holm, again, a key block on both touchdown drives. Kevin Holm has, he'll be the most valuable offensive lineman. Ludwig Milfors puts it through the uprights. It's North Dakota State 14, it's State 3. Coming September 24th, this is the story of what it takes to face the pain, Starting defense. fight the pressure. What's your assignment? Kill everyone. They're talking about how good I am under pressure. Feel the power. I'm going to bust your gun open and watch you die. And survive the program. Rated R. Don't miss the Labor Day sale at Wallwork Ford. Over $6 million of new and used cars and trucks in stock, and they're all on sale from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. only. Check the zero down deals on best-selling Rangers. Over 60 in stock from $89.93. And air-conditioned Aerostars. 16 to choose from at only $14,393. Or pick from 125 used cars and trucks. They start at just $199. Top dollar trade allowance and on-the-spot financing, too. All of the no-money-down $6 million 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Labor Day sale at Wallwork, your regional Ford dealer. It starts with the offensive line. The left guard and left tackle seal things off. Kevin Holm does a great job allowing the quarterback to get around the corner. Then everybody's looking for someone to block. Arden does a great job getting the crease. He's run this play before. He's run this play a hundred <laughs> times, and that's why he executes it so well. And you know, Kevin Holm makes the play, but on a ground level replay like that, you don't see those initial blocks that makes that play work, do you, Don? I mean, there's some great inside work there for the Bison. Yep, yeah, the interior line is just doing a tremendous job. We can't say enough good things. Scoring drive for NDSU, 65 yards, 10 plays, 539, another impressive showing. Ludwig Milfors kicks it off, Sean Scott back deep. This time it's Kling, feel it at the 12, across the 20. Oh! He's delivered a big hit by Steve Marion. And there's a flag on the play. Kling was brought down at the 27-yard line. 
of a face mask here. This is a, a chance. Momentum is so important in any football game. This is a chance for the Bison to have the momentum really swing in their favor if the defense can force the punt. Pittsburgh State will be backed up inside its 15-yard line. Illegal block blows away oh. on the return. <laughs> First and 10. And you heard it. Illegal block on the return. So Pitt State down 14 to 3. And I look at the scoreboard, and uh, gosh, somebody's optimistic. The scoreboard right now says Bison 32, visitor 3. <laughs> <laughs> they have a vision. So, <laughs> somebody's awfully optimistic of the scoreboard tonight. Now let's see what the crowd does here. Pitt State packed up deep in its own territory. Sean Scott takes the pitch. He's out near the 20-yard line. So Sean Scott gets about nine yards on the play. Eric Hagerly in on the stop for North Dakota State along with Wade Basants, number 54 Basants, out of Beulah, North Dakota. The Bison just aren't used to seeing this kind of speed. This, this kid is tremendous. This is what makes their offense go. They're tight end, number 86. He's the guy they want to go to. Now they'll put him in motion. Line up in the inverted wishbone, then they go in motion. The pitch is to Tobin. He's across the 25, driven out of bounds by Eric Hagerly at about the 27-yard line. Joey Tobin, the most experienced back that Pitt State has this year, rushed for 950 yards last year, but Ronald Moore was the main man last year for Pittsburgh State. Moore was the Harlan Hill Award winner, and he's had a great training camp with the Phoenix Cardinals. And with Garrison Hurst holding out, you'll see Ronnie Moore a lot tomorrow in Phoenix's season opener. So there are some question marks in terms of the running backs for Pittsburgh State this year. Here's the inverted wishbone again. Paul Sparkman, 86, the tight end, goes in motion. This time the pitch is to Scott. Hagerly comes up to make the defensive play from his free safety, and that's three tackles in a row by Eric Hagerly. The Bison defense is designed to get the free safety involved in the option game, and you've got to have an awful good free safety to do, do that, and he makes the play that you have to make. He's really the quarterback on defense, isn't he, when you're playing an option football team? Yes, and it, I saw one of the pro scouts before the game, and they were looking at him this evening. Hager Lee has been a, a real sturdy man at that position, starting 21 of the last 22 games. 6-3, native of Baldwin, Wisconsin, is Eric Hager Lee. DeBarco Gaines and Joey Tobin split backs behind Hutchins. Hutchins now drops back, looks downfield, and he had a man wide open, but he underthrew Michael Munt. Munt was wide open on the play. And that'll bring up a third and eight. This is probably a read the the split end, if he can go deep, he's going to go deep. If he can, he's going to turn into a, into a stop. They're just going to react to the defense. Well, Tim Jacobson, the Bison quarterback, definitely didn't want to get beat. You saw him back off yep. that play about an additional 10 yards. This is a big play. Right now, this is a big, big play in the first half. Third and eight for the Gorillas. Hutchins rolls out, throws downfield, and that throw is also short. Sean Carlson in on the coverage, but Pitt State will have to punt it away after North Dakota State holds defensively. The PSU really needed a drive there. This defense of theirs has got to be getting worn down already. They've already been on the field for more than half of the first half here. Two long drives by the Bison. Well, you mentioned it, Don. North Dakota State already has the momentum, but with a stop like that and possibly good field position, they could really put this game in their command. Israel Moses back deep. The snap is... Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. It's a loose football, and North Dakota State will have possession inside the 10-yard line. A big play by the special teams, and the dome crowd comes to its feet. That was just a poor snap. Look at the punter. Ball skimming off the turf. Couldn't pick it up. Not to mention quite a rush by the Bison line. David Mitchell, the punter, could not handle the snap. And the minute he looked up, he had a Bison defender in his face. 
Well, Bruce Somm has to be very proud of his offensive line. He has done a tremendous job preparing for this game. Now they have a chance to really make a big swing in momentum. It's first and goal for the Bison inside the 10 after that turnover. Three backs now set behind Arden Beachy. Sanchez, Miller, and Carlson. The give is to Carlson. He's got the corner. He's inside the five-yard line, driven out of bounds at the three. Chris Brown, number 11, the free safety, comes up to make the play just before Carlson was ready to dive for the end zone. We talked about Brown being a big play guy. Coach Boyle said he's been a real pleasant surprise. Last year, about halfway through the season, as a true freshman, he turned out to be a starter for the team. You think this guy doesn't like contact? In last year's championship game, 23 tackles. He was all over the field. And that was a Division II championship game record. 8-18 remaining in the second quarter. North Dakota State knocking on the door to open some room up with their margin. They already lead it 14-3. Triple backs again behind Beachy. Double tight end. Beachy turns it up. Touchdown, North Dakota State. It didn't take them long, just three plays for the Bison to get in to make it 20 to 3. And they pounce on that turnover by Pittsburgh State. Ludwig Milfor is in for the point attempt. Rob Hyland will hold. The snap is down, the kick is up, and it is good. It's NDSU 21, Pittsburgh State 3. Again, the left guard and left tackle, Fuchs and Tika. How do you pronounce Frank? Tika. 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 They were. They got the movement. The lead back did a nice job on his block on the linebacker, and again, Arden found the crease. Hate to get ahead of ourselves here, but Beachy already three touchdowns. The Bison single game record is five, done most recently five years ago, 1988, by Tony Satter against South Dakota State. So Arden, possibly looking at history tonight. Well, he sure is an impressive quarterback. North Dakota State scoring drive, three plays, nine yards. It took him just 10 seconds, and Arden Beachy with the two-yard touchdown. Check that, Beachy with the second touchdown tonight. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. <laughs> well, Pittsburgh State, they got to be carrying on a heavy-duty con heavy conversation defensively because as you look at Rocky Hager, his team's offense has been able to do what it's wanted to do pretty much this entire game. Yes, you, that's, a, that's a, a tremendous combination when you have the offensive line playing as well as they are. And you've got a veteran quarterback who's playing well. You've got nice speed with your running backs. Uh, North Dakota State is just running their game plan. They're, they're running the ball inside, and that's been able to take the ball outside. They're throwing the ball effectively when they, when they want to. Don, you were one of the uh, architects of the Veer option. How much has the Veer option grown and, and uh, been developed over the last 10 years? Well, I think um, it's a lot more sophisticated than people uh, think sometimes. And I think Rocky and his staff, um, Dale and Bruce, his, his offensive coaches, have taken it to another level. They're really doing some uh, really cutting-edge things with the option game. Milford's kick goes out of bounds. So Pittsburgh State will take over at the 35-yard line. Don, Coach Royals told us that we'll throw 10 to 12 times if we need to, 25 times if we have to. If you're him, do you start throwing more now or do you stick to the game? No, they've, they've only had, they've had, they've had two drives. Their first drive was very successful, a very effective first drive. Their second drive, they got a penalty, put them in bad field position. They don't have to panic yet. There's, there's plenty of time. They've, um, there's enough things encouraging for them to stick with what they want to do. Pitt State will... Take over at the 35-yard line after that Ludwig Milfors kick went out of bounds. Pitt State, as you said, Don, started with bad field position in their last drive, which resulted in a turnover and ended up in a Bison touchdown. Arden Vici, when you head in. When you have the speed that Pitt has at running back, you're just one play away from getting back into the thick of things. And that speed is Sean Scott, number 21. Rushed for just 254 yards last year, but he had about a 10-yard average. And a junior is Scott, and he really makes 
hopes that this year he'll be able to break out big for Pittsburgh State. This time the pitch is to Scott. Tries to get around the corner and Israel Moses is there. The sophomore Israel Moses comes up and makes the stop defensively. The lack of an inside game is going to catch up with Pitt right here and you can see the the Bison defense just flowing to the outside. Uh, is, they've got to get an inside game going. Israel Moses, the sophomore from St. Paul, Minnesota, who stepped into this Bison lineup last year as a true freshman, made a big impression. He has a lot of talent. The only thing the Bison can looking for out of him this year is a little more discipline in his position. Gain of one on the play, second and nine for Pitt State at its own 36-yard line. Moreland split out to the, or slotted to the left. And the give is to Moreland on the reverse. And right there is Bruce Yagi, the nose guard. He read that play beautifully. This is Yagi's first year as a starter, but he's played a lot the last couple of years, filling in for All-American Sean Stewart, doing a good job so far. He's a very active nose guard. Uh, he, he gets movement. Um, they got other people to handle the double team better, but he's a very active nose guard, makes a good play there with, with his quickness. Yagi, a walk-on from Breckenridge, Minnesota. His dad played with the Bison. Nice job getting off the block. Third and long. Inverted wishbone. Now Sparkman goes in motion. Hutchin rolls out, sets up. He's pressured. Throws it, and his throw is wide. Intended for Kling. Good coverage that time by number nine, Matt Ness on the play. The sophomore to Barnesville, Minnesota. Jeff Hagman, four sacks in 1992, was right there applying the pressure. The play action in third and long just is not as effective as it is in first and ten. And the Bison are not fooled. Can you feel the momentum? You sure can. Three and out for the Gorillas. David Mitchell set to punt. And it's Israel Moses back deep for North Dakota State. Moses fields at the punt at the 30. Heads right and gets out across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. I like to patent what Leo Ringy said to his defense after that first series because whatever <laughs> said it was very effective. Yeah, because uh, defensively, NDSU has tightened up. And we talked pitch. about they would make some adjustments, and they sure did. And the Bison start out with good field position again at their 37-yard line. Five and a half minutes to play in the half. It's 21-3 Bison. The Rams are having fun. They are the big guys up front. NDSU has controlled it. They've had the clock for 14 and a half minutes of this first half. Split backs behind Beachy. Makes a call at the line of scrimmage now. Inside gift to Sanchez. Nowhere. Chance Rudznick, number 92, wraps up Sanchez. And there'll be little or no gain on that play. What you're seeing here is familiarity breeds good defense. The, uh, the pit defense has seen some of the things Bison offense are reacting a little bit better now. That that's a trap that Bison won very effective. This time they react a little bit better. Familiarity is a game wears on. Second down and 10, and I'll tell you what, number 40's been pretty quiet. T.R. McDonald. I get a sense that any time it's going to be McDonald's turn. Split backs behind Arden Beachy. There you see McDonald on the top of your screen. Beachy down the line option. Looks downfield. There he is. T.R. McDonald short of the first down, but he has it at about the 45-yard line. T.R. McDonald is online to become the all-time leading receiver in North Dakota State history. And NDSU's had a couple of fine ones in Stacy Robinson and Len Kretschmann. Yes, they have. And again, uh, uh, up front, the uh, offense linemen, the tight ends, the backs. Oh, look at that. Do a great job of giving everybody enough time. McDonald had one foot out of bounds. Cancel that reception. So it'll bring up a third and ten. What the heck? I guess the play anyway. Not that bad, huh? <laughs> Back to McDonald again. What do you think, Coach Martin? Mm. McDonald in motion to the near side of the field. Miller and Carlson are the split backs behind Beachy. Beachy rolls out, looks downfield. He's got McDonald inside the 50 to the 40. He cuts inside. 30, 25-yard line, T.R. McDonald breaks it for a big play for North Dakota State. 
Brian Carson saved the touchdown as he hauled down McDonald at the 25-yard line. Third and long play action shouldn't be this effective, but it is. T.R. McDonald, supposed to be a possession receiver, shows excellent acceleration right here. Makes a big play after the catch. Sign of a great receiver, consistency. 22nd straight ball game, he's caught a pass. Four-year starter to Tino Grace, great high school program. That's a first down for the Bison, and we have Arden Beachy down way behind the play. Just noticed him now. He's down on the turf. Looks like he... Going and in. that's got to be a big concern, Don, as you uh, look at Arden Beachy. Obviously having a lot of pain. Looks like in the left leg. Let's see if we can pick up where the injury might have happened. Ooh. Looks like he got hit on the right knee, don't you think, guys? I think it was his left knee. Left knee. I think it's right knee, here. I'm sorry. Right here. Um, doesn't look good. Wow, this is... Uh, he had it planted. This is a real quiet moment here in the Fargo Dome with 529 remaining in the half. The Bison leading 21-3, and Arden Beachy, the senior quarterback, mm -hmm. down on the field experiencing a lot of pain. They brought a wheelchair out to the field. You know, he he's a tremendous quarterback. I've seen a lot of quarterbacks. He's, he's as good as they come. Uh, if he is unable to return to the game, and, and that looks like that's going to happen right now, Mike Gidley was the backup quarterback coming into this game. Well, Mike Gidley, last year as a true freshman, stepped into a starting role in just his second collegiate game ever. Arden Beachy did not play the North Central Conference season opener last year against Audra Stanley. Gidley stepped in and did a nice job for the Bison in that game. Yeah, Gidley's a young guy, so this might limit what the Bison want to do, what they might want to try with their offense, but he's certainly a very capable quarterback, probably the quarterback of the future when Arden moves on. Boy, Arden Beachy has been such a durable man to lead that Bison option since he stepped into the starting role in his sophomore season, and you see him holding that left knee and he's that in, is a big, big concern for North Dakota State. He's in the best hands possible. Dr. Lee Christofferson walking off the field with him. There's none better. Mike Gidley, the sophomore from Superior, Wisconsin, will direct the Bison offense. And that beachy injury somewhat overshadows that huge play that T.R. McDonald just turned for North Dakota State. Look for something safe, a, a very safe handoff. Let the Rams do their thing. Gidley, split backs, gives the Sanchez inside, and he's wrapped up by Cooper Harris, number 55. No gain on the play. And gosh, it just got quiet in the dome, didn't it? Since the beachy injury. You get a good look at number 55, Cooper Harris, 6'1", 216-pound junior, another junior college transfer player. And boy, did he come on last year at the end. He had 11 tackles against the Bison and then 17 tackles against Jacksonville State in the national championship game. There was a pickup of one on the Sanchez rush. It's second and nine for the Bison at the 25. Miller and Sanchez split behind Gidley. Gidley down the line, option, turns it up, and stopped on the play by number 44, Carlos Nevins. Carlos Nevins, one of several guys on the PSU defense that were switched switched around. He started as a linebacker. Tonight he's playing defensive end. In fact, his first game starting at defensive end. Um, Mike, uh, when he looks at the film, this would be a great learning experience for him. Uh, he had an opportunity to pitch the ball. This is the this is what young quarterbacks, this is a progression they just have to go through. Uh, you can practice, you can talk, but they just have to do it in the game situation. He'll learn, he'll get better, and the next time he'll, he'll make that pitch. Three receivers set for the Bison on the throwing situation on third and eight. McDonald, Arts, and Larson. And Gidley turns it up inside the 20. He may go. He's dragged down at the two-yard line. Mike Gidley on his third play in since taking over for Arden Beachy gets the first down and puts the Bison at or at near the goal line rather. Obviously Arden Beachy is a huge loss but when you have the offensive line doing the job they're doing as you see him once again here on the replay any of these guys can produce. Kyle Carlson had a uh, very key block. I'm really impressed with the 
the skilled people, how well they block. That's a lot of mental toughness. Um, great play by Mike. That'll help his confidence. Uh, that's what carrying the ball can do. Give him a chance to redeem himself. Double tight end, three backs now behind Gidley. First and goal for the Bison at the three. Gidley turns it up, and he is denied as he went over left guard, stopped on the play by Cooper Harris, number 55. Also in on the help defensively is Andy Sweet, number 50. Let's go to John Hagry. John, what can you tell us about quarterback Arden Beachy? Dan, I had a quick conversation with Dr. Lee uh, Christopherson, and he said we were asked him if he thought it would be a game injury, if he'd be out a couple games, or possibly the season. He said if he could guess right now, it would look the whole season could be out for Arden Beachy. Well, of course, let's uh, let's say that's an early comment. Let's not speculate too far, but that's not a good initial report. And Gidley is up and over for the touchdown. Mike Gidley gives North Dakota State a 27 to three lead. And they went right over Kevin Bloom that time for the That's touchdown. Right. That was a uh, Mike Gidley deserves a lot of credit. The Bison offense line deserves a lot of credit. Bison tradition, everything that you talk about with the great football program, a backup quarterback came in and made it happen. And this is what you try to get across to your backups. Hey, everybody has a role. Everybody has a part to play. Everybody's got to contribute. Hang in there. You're going to get your chance. Ludwig Milfors on the hold from. Rob Highland, the line drive kick is good. It's North Dakota State 28, Pittsburgh State 3. You talk about backup quarterbacks, Don, in the national championship game in 1984. Your number one quarterback, Jeff Ventrum, gets injured. Your backup quarterback, Dale Hammersmith, comes in and <laughs> engineers a drive that, uh, that produced three points. So you know how valuable those backup quarterbacks are. And that backup quarterback's a tough position because you're a good athlete, but because you're so valuable your football team, you can't play on special teams, you can't play somewhere else, and that gets kind of frustrating. And uh, it takes a special type of person. Let's take a look at the injury here again, guys, to Arden Beachy. Watch his left knee. Ooh, the foot is planted, and that's... Well, again, the initial word from Dr. Lee Christofferson is not favorable for Arden Beachy, and we will continue to update you on that situation. North Dakota State, meantime, goes 63 yards and eight plays. And I'll tell you what, you've mentioned confidence from Mike Gidley. It sure is for this game. And in training camp, he was in a heated battle with Rob Highland for that number two quarterback position. And talking to the Bison coaches, I think he still is in a heated battle. Yep. I think they're very high on Rob Highland. They, they feel good about the competition between those two young men. Gidley is a sophomore from Superior, Wisconsin. Highland is a red Bill Fors kicks and it's Scott receiving at the eight. Sean Scott across the 30 and near the 35 yard line. Scott had a nice wedge to work with. So the Gorillas got to work offensively with 232 remaining in the half and North Dakota State leading 28 to three. Football is such an emotional game. Don, in a situation like this, you lose your starting quarterback. What kind of effect does that have on the team? I suppose with the 27 and 28 3 lead, it's a little different. I think because of the great job that Rockney and his staff have done, because of the tradition at North Dakota State, everybody just digs down a little bit deeper and they, uh, they rise above that adversity. That's what tradition does for you. Hutchins comes to center, split backs behind him. Jeff Mullen, number six, in the slot to the near side. Kling is the wide receiver. Hutchins, pitch this time to DeBarco Gaines. Oh. He is dragged down. Steve Marion and Chad Punzak just snuffed that play out. You know, I, I think as you go back and look at this game, you're going to see a defense that grew up awful fast. I've never seen a defense mature quite that fast from that first series <laughs> to the second series. Steve Marion seen some time in the game. He is a big hitter. Marion out of Bismarck, North Dakota. Splits that playing time with Israel Moses at the strong safety. A gain of, or a loss rather, of four on the play. Second and 14 from the 31. Gaines and Tobin are the split backs behind Hutchins. This time Tobin, the handoff. He's out across the 35 and then hit by Marion again. And look at Steve Marion. He's having a heck of a time on this defensive series. Gain of five or six on the play and Pitt State will face a third and nine. Nice open field tackling, good pursuit, a lot of people around the ball, a lot of green jerseys. 
North Dakota State's most physical player defensively, Joe Toth, sitting out this game. He'll return to the lineup last next week, or two weeks, rather, when the Bison open the NCC season. Hutchins rolls out near side, looks downfield, has got a man, it's Kling. Inside the 50, and he's got the first down. So Shad Kling with a big reception for the Gorillas, and they move into Bison territory, a pickup of 15. Kling doesn't have great speed, but you look at him, he runs great routes, exactly what he did on this play, turned the DB inside out, wide open for a nice game. First down, champ. You have to respect that speed, and it softens things up in the secondary. Punsack does a nice job keeping the thing contained. Kling has played every game in the last three years. Mr. Durable offensively for Pitt State. Two wide receivers and Sparkman, the tight end, in the slot to the far side of the field. This time to give it to Tobin. He's inside the 40-yard line, near a first down for Pitt State. So Joey Tobin, with his biggest rush of the night so far. Pitt State now, with under a minute to play in the half, wants to hurry it up offensively, but We'll have a measurement. It is so close to the first down for the Gorillas. I'm guessing by the nose of the football from up here. <laughs> Granted, we're a long ways away. Tobin rushed for almost 1,000 yards last year, and it is a first down for Pitt State. The Gorillas have 55 seconds to work with, and this would be a, a Big, big score for Pitt State if they'd be able to put something on the board here before the first half. No question. They they need to. They, they have to. Again, two wide receivers for Pitt State. Sparkman is split to the far side. DeFarco, Gaines, and Tobin are the backs behind Hutchins. Quick drop. Munt has the reception. He's dragged down by the play. On the play, rather, by Israel Moses and also Matt Ness. Israel Moses. The clock runs with 36 seconds left in the half. Pitt State in the hurry-up offense now. They are inside the Bison 35 at the 33-yard line. Hutchins rolls out near side, looks downfield, clean. It's picked off. Sean Carlson at the 19. He's across the 40-yard line. Sean Carlson, the senior quarterback for North Dakota State with the interception with 19 seconds left here in the half. What a big play for a, for a senior. He makes, uh, makes a great play. He makes a great catch. Has to go back over his back. Brings it down. Gets a nice return. 24-yard return for Carlson out to the 41-yard line. And just as quickly as we talked about what a big shot of momentum or somewhat of a shot of momentum it would be for Pittsburgh State to score before the half. The Bison now half possession with just 19 seconds left. An option team to throw every down. That's what they don't want to do. Raul Sanchez with the carry. He gets about five. Andy Sweet in on the tackle for Pitt State. And that'll do it for the first half. Dominated by North Dakota State. But underlying it all is the injury to starting quarterback Arden Beachy, who went down late in the second quarter with a knee injury. Nonetheless, North Dakota State dominates the line of scrimmage, and they lead it 28-3. And let's go to John Hagery. John? Thanks, Lockdown. I'm with head coach Rocky Hager. Rocky, uh, they started to move the ball a little bit towards the end of the half there, but hey, you're up 28-3 at this point. Well, we're glad to have a nice lead. Uh, hopefully we can get ourselves executing again the next 30 minutes here. Remember, last year we were down at Pittsburgh, and I think we are up by 11 going in the fourth quarter, or right early in the fourth quarter, made it 11-point lead. They came back and nipped us, and uh, we just we can't have any soft moments out here, and that's one of the things that's always a concern for a football team is being able to play hard for a full 60, and hopefully we can do that. Obviously, you had Arden Beachy for that first half. The prognosis, early prognosis, isn't good for him. You're going to have to get some more things out of your offense without him there. Well, I tell you what, Mike Gidley took over yep. and did pretty nicely for us. Uh, we're pleased with what he's been able to do. He's been out there before. Players will make plays. I think he's a player. Any other adjustments you're really concerned about? 
Well, uh, we'll have to take a look at some of the things they're trying to do. They stole every daggone play action pass we've got in our book from our playoff games, so we'll have to be ready for all that stuff, too. But they're good coaches, though. Come out and play hard against us this next half. We've got to be ready for it. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Second half. Thanks. Thank you, John. We're at the half. It's North Dakota State 28, Pittsburgh State 3. You're watching Bison football across North Dakota on NBC. <laughs> Buick, the car company that wrote the book on quality, closes the books on all remaining 93s. Park Avenue, priced thousands less than any comparably equipped luxury car. Now with giant cash incentives and low leases to drive Buick's best. Look for special incentives on Roadmaster, Century, Skylark, Regal, and LeSabre, all at sales event prices. Direct to you cashbacks and dealer discounts. Get into your nearest quality Buick dealer and save right now. The other day, these guys came to me and said, Kirby, how'd you like to be in a cross-training commercial for Nike? You wear the shoes, right? We could come film your workout. So I say to them, let me get this straight. You want to make a three-hour commercial? Fargo Dome, NDSU up 28 to 3 over the Gorillas. It was a heck of a first half. Joining me now, Bob Ensign, the NDSU Athletic Director. Bob, this has been quite of a switch from Dakota Field in to hear your impressions of the first half, the crowd, and everything. Well, just unbelievable. Being in a dome at the University of South Dakota down there and knowing the impact, and this is tremendous. I think Pittsburgh had four motion penalties because of the crowds the first half, and, and that's exciting. It's going to be an exciting football for us in here. You think the crowd obviously had a big factor in that, and uh, hopefully they'll do that again in the second half. Oh, definitely. The, the hardest part for me, I think, is going to be scheduling uh, preseason uh, teams to come in when you get a Pittsburgh, and we've been working two years to get them in here for an opener, and the way our uh, NDSU is playing right now, it's going to be tough to get other teams to come in here with this crowd. Now, I've heard rumblings you not only want to get big games like this in, but also uh, postseason games, possibly a national title game to come up here every year. How's that going? My, my goal is to get the NCAA championship game in Fargo. I think the people here, it's an indication of the support we have. They deserve it. It's going to take a little bit of time. I want to get the NCAA people up here, but we're going to get it. We'll get it here one day. You also want to get some other sports in here uh, on a regular basis? Right. We're going to have the postseason basketball uh, conference men's tournament the next two years. Uh, we're going to keep going after playoff games. We've had USA Wrestling. So it really has opened up a great door for us and our fans. Things couldn't be going uh, much better now up 28-3, except for the Arden Beachy thing. Uh, I think NDSU fans are pretty pleased with that first half. Well, I think we better get the Sports Illustrated writer up here and rewrite that article. The Gorilla, uh, the Gorilla Dome down there doesn't quite uh, even get close to the Fargo Dome. It's they're, they're a great team. They have a great philosophy. We enjoy the competition with them, but there's nobody better than our fans here and our students here. Bob, thanks a lot for joining me, and uh, keep up the good work here, and uh, we'll, we'll fill her up next time. There's a, there's a few seats open up there on the student yeah, section. It's great to have you people televising this game. Thanks. Okay, Bob. We're in the Fargo Dome. Bob Ensign, Athletic Director at NDSU. We'll be back with more right after this. It's a little bit country where hot and cool connect. Hot eats. Cool treats. Dairy Queen. There's real country cooking at Dairy Queen. The chicken strip country basket, now only $2.99. Four golden strips of chicken, all white breast meat, moist and tender. Crispy fries, Texas toast, and country gravy. The Dairy Queen chicken strip country basket, just $2.99. Y'all drop in for lunch or dinner. Hot eat, cool treat, we treat you right. for sure the new cats move awfully fast see your dealer now before the fall deals are gone precision craftsmanship
It's usually found in the world's finest furniture, or windows made by Pella. Windows so well-crafted, so energy-efficient, they don't just meet industry standards, but often exceed them substantially. Quality like this only comes from Pella. It's the 93 closeout at Sullen Motors. Factory rebates and selling discounts can save you up to $6,000 on Cadillacs, $4,000 on Olds, $3,000 on Pontiacs, $3,000 on GMC trucks, and $3,000 on Mazdas. Factory rebates and selling discounts. Sellin's close out 93 with over 200 new cars. Huge savings and low down payments for qualified buyers. The 93 close out at your automotive superstore for savings. Sullen Motors, south of I-94, Moorhead. Welcome back to the Fargo Dome. NDSU leads Pittsburgh State 28 to 3. We're in halftime activities. Executive Director of the Fargo Dome, Roger Newton, joins me now. Roger, this place has come a long way. You had three feet of water in here a few months ago, and uh, it's finally here. Your, your feelings on tonight? Well, you know, this is something that the community's waited for for years, and it's finally here, and we're very excited. You're right, about six weeks ago, we had three feet of water in this place. This turf was floating, you know, about six, six to eight inches of water. It took a lot of work by a lot of people, but, uh, you know, we made it, and uh, this is great. We're very happy. Talk about this week now. You had a uh, concert in here uh, Thursday night, I believe, and then you got the carpet down and everything. Yeah, we've had a long week for the staff, a lot of long hours. Tuesday night, we had Def Leppard. Thursday night, we had Billy Ray Cyrus. We had to get ready for this. We had, a, had the gorilla co gorillas coming in for practice uh, uh, 2 o'clock Friday afternoon. We had operations people that literally worked 25 to 30 hours uh, straight to get the carpet down and get everything ready. Uh, the carpet itself, we're going to be painting this turf starting tomorrow morning. The, the turf is not like we would like to have it with the paint because of the flood damage. So it's going to be a, a fresh coat of paint. Fresh logo is going to look great for the next game on the 18th. How about tonight now? What have you heard from some of the fans? It looks like it's going off without a hitch. Well, all I can say is there are a lot of smiles around here. A lot of happy people. Uh, you know, the fans, I think, are just elated to be here, and, and we're happy to have them. It's been a great relationship with NDSU, and we're looking forward to it continuing in the future. There's been some talk about it being a little uh, dark in here, but it seems tonight that it, it's just fine. Yeah. Well, well I'll tell you what. Uh, one of the photographers with the four mentioned a uh, concern. We're checking into it and to see if uh, there is a problem, and if there is, we'll look into correcting it. But looks great right now. Uh, the sound factor was really uh, a factor in the uh, first half there with four legal procedure games. Dr. Ensign said it's going to be hard to get teams to come in here when they see all those penalties, but uh, it, it has been loud, huh? It has been loud. Hey, we love it when it's loud. It's great. It's a lot of fun. Roger, thanks for joining me. Thank Continue you uh, your good work with the Fargo Dome, and uh, we'll see you many broadcasts to come. Great. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. Okay. We'll be back with more from the Fargo Dome right after this. fans, buy your general admission Bison tickets at all Stop and Goes. And be sure to enter the Stop and Go KFGO Pick the Pros. It's new, fun, weekly prizes, and the grand prize, a free trip for two to the Super Bowl in Atlanta. Oh, it's an opportunity that only happens once a year. Enrollment time for dental accident coverage. Watch for this envelope. Fill it out, enclose an $8 check, and mail. Your $8 premium provides a student in your family, kindergarten through college, with coverage for all dental accidents, on or off the school grounds, 24 hours a day, for a full year. For more information, call your nearest office of Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota. The news about Dodge Intrepid hasn't made Ford and Toyota very happy. After all, its revolutionary cab-forward design means Intrepid has more passenger room than Taurus or Camry. Plus, Intrepid offers safety features they don't give you, like both driver and passenger side airbag standard, or an available integrated child safety seat. So when the press started calling Intrepid names, you'd think Ford and Toyota would be overjoyed. They weren't. Dodge Intrepid. This changes everything. Members of the Minn Kota Power family are a self-sufficient group 
especially when it comes to making electricity. We don't depend on foreign oil or piped-in gas to generate electricity. We use plentiful lignite coal mined right here in North Dakota, and there's enough for our children and their children. This is why your electric cooperative can guarantee your off-peak heating rates. Use homegrown electricity. Ask for off-peak heating with a guaranteed rate, only from your electric cooperative or municipal. Members of the Minn Kota Power Systems. Well, every land-grant university in the United States owes its existence to the Morrill Act of 1862, and you know, it, it's a glorious thing. It's an American thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's the thing that opened up universities to the people at large. The outreach of a land-grant university, people think automatically of extension service, but it's something that goes across the whole campus. Our faculty in business should be in touch with business in the state. Our faculty in my home college, a liberal arts faculty, they should be in touch with people talking about the culture of the Northern Plains and about, the, uh, about life in North Dakota. If there's any state that ought to have a land-grant university, it's North Dakota, because the people in North Dakota are so egalitarian, and some people use the word populist, I don't know if that's right, but if we didn't have a land-grant university in North Dakota, people would demand it. And welcome back at the Fargo Dome. We're at the half. The Bison leading Pittsburgh State by a score of 28 to 3. We'll have more football from the Dome, but first, your local news brief. KTHI News 11 at this hour. Uh, good evening. We hope you are enjoying the uh, football game. We'll return to the Fargo Dome in just a few minutes. First, this uh, news break. One person was killed in Minneapolis and three were injured after a shooting during a wedding reception. One of those injured was the groom who was treated and released from the hospital. Police say a fight broke out as guests were leaving an American Legion Hall. Someone pulled a gun and fired. Police are still looking for a suspect. Witnesses say the man who was killed was the groom's best friend. Support is growing for a plan granting partial self-rule to Palestinians in the occupied territories. The largest faction of the Palestine Liberation Organization, Fatah, has endorsed the plan despite much heated opposition. The development prompted PLO Chief Yasser Arafat to proclaim on Israeli television, peace has started. Fatah's support allows the agreement to come before the Palestinian parliament in exile and the ruling executive committee, which could begin as early as tomorrow. Cool night out there, it sounds like. Yeah, it's going to be a cool one. Uh, here's the forecast for you. Uh, it looks like we're going to have a cool night. Not going to freeze tonight. But uh, low will be about 43. It will clear. The winds will be strong north at 15 to 25 miles an hour. Tomorrow, the high 59, partly sunny, but it will seem a lot like fall. Northwest winds at 10 to 20 miles an hour. And one little special forecast in here when it comes up. Uh, you know, this did it to me before, but uh, I was going to... at 6, too. Yeah, yeah, it just locked up on us. So there you go, Fargo Dome forecast. Mild light winds, another good half of football. Oh. Temperature in the Fargo Dome, about 70 degrees. It was worth the wait. The wait, I That's guess right, so. Dave. Let's hope so. And there are other games going on tonight, uh, too, aren't there? That's Dennis? right. Finds it off to a great start, but uh, nine other NCC football teams tested non-conference waters today. And some mixed results for the NCC schools that played tonight. Morningside, a winner over Northwestern Iowa, 34-7. to South Dakota State, they lose to Montana, 52-48. It's South Dakota leading Northern State in the second. And Northern Colorado all over Western State, 38 to nothing. Nebraska Kearney beat August, Augustana, 30-14. to And Mankato State leading Northwest Missouri State in the second. Also, Wayne State, a winner over Nebraska Omaha, 32-19. Joe Paterno's Penn State Nittany Lions made their Big Ten debut today against the Minnesota Gophers. And Penn State quarterback John Saka completed his first six passes of the game. Three of those went for touchdowns. That one to Bobby Engram, 28-7 Penn State at the half. And Saka and Engram weren't finished. They hooked up for four TDs today. There's a 30-yard scoring play. That kind of closed the deal as the Nittany Lions win it. The final score was 38-20. But the uh, competition in the Big Ten will get much more difficult down the line for the Lions. All right, and of course, we'll have much more on uh, these stories and uh, many other things tonight at 10 o'clock. We'll see you then. We'll go back to the Fargo Dome.
In the next 60 minutes, more people will buy Ford F-Series pickups than any other. That's why the Ford F-150 is the best-selling vehicle in the world. And why five of the top ten best-sellers in America are Fords. F-150 is better than ever, with a sleek, redesigned look and comfortable, well-equipped interior. Even a roomy super cab. And during the factory-authorized clearance, every F-150 is priced to move. How will you spend the next 60 minutes? If you're like many, you'll spend them at the Ford Factory Authorized Clearance at your local Northland Ford dealer. The other day, these guys came to me and said, Kirby, how'd you like to be in a cross training commercial for Nike? You wear the shoes, right? We could come film your workout. So I say to them, let me get this straight. You want to make a three-hour commercial? There really are only two types of free checking. Commonly free and community free. Commonly free checking can be found virtually anywhere. Very, very common. Community free checking with great free features and the best in community banking is available only here at Community First National Bank of Fargo. Of the two, we recommend the free checking that's less common and more community. Community free checking from Community First National Bank of Fargo. Member FDIC. How about a burger, baby? I don't want no burger. I sat down with clown today. Buy any foot long in 22 ounce soft drink after 4 p.m. and get a second foot long for 99 cents. More than 18,000 fans are in the Fargo Dome tonight, and so far they like what to see. The Bison leading Pitt State 28 to 3 at the half. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dan Hammer, along with Ed Kendall, the sports director at KFYR in Bismarck, and former Bison Tolson, Wisconsin head coach Don Morton. And gentlemen, the name of that game first half was that North Dakota State's offensive line completely dominated this football game. No question about it. They completely dominated, and a Bison defense grew up in a hurry. They set the tone early. Their first possession. Jason Miller, 24 yards, capping a long drive by the Bison, 81 yards and 14 plays. Jason Miller is the fastest running back on the Bison football team. He shows good acceleration, does a great job getting into the end zone. What an effort. Bison are on the scoreboard first. Pitt State got a field goal in its first possession, then NDSU's second possession, 65 yards and 10 plays, and it's Arden Beachy. And this is Patton at Arden Beachy, doing what he does best, keeps it, goes eight yards for the score. Great block coming up here, number 26, Kyle Carlson from Dickinson. Just lays out the defender, paving the way to the end zone. And there was some great blocking again by that Bison offensive line. NDSU scored its third touchdown as Arden Beachy again on the option. This time... This is the left side of the offensive line, and Arden finds the crease inside, gets a little help from his running back. Again, Bison are on the scoreboard. Shortly after that, Beachy went down with an knee injury. Mike Gidley came in, engineered the final touchdown. And Gidley actually had a great run to get down near the goal line, then he caps it here a couple plays later, just getting over the goal line there to make it 28-3. 28-3 is the score at half. North Dakota State has amassed 166 yards rushing in that first half, as opposed to 73 for Pitt State. Yes, and if you're a running football team, that's the kind of stats you want to have at halftime. They've also been able to throw the ball very effectively. Of course, uh, if you're North Dakota State, the big damper on the first half was the injury to starting quarterback Arden Beachy, who went down late in the second quarter. Beachy hit on the knee as his knee is planted. And it's tough to see a number, but it looks like Carlos Nevins, number 44, This is a hit. Unfortunately, this is a part of the game. It wasn't a cheap shot. It, it was a... And we'll tell you more about Arden Beachy. In the meantime, let's go field side to John Hegrey. Thanks, Dan. Chuck Broyles with me. What kind of adjustments did you make at half, Coach? Well, right now, we hope we made, we made some good ones. We're uh, going to try to uh, not get out of our game plan on offense. You know, we feel comfortable with what we're doing on offense. We need to complete some passes. Defense, we need to be a lot more aggressive. You know, we probably have to stun a little more and slant a little more. And, uh, we're just catching and, and not playing. Big play in the game so far. You know, the punt down there, we bobble the punt and gives them a chance to go up by two. Guys, I got to go. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Back up to you, Dan. Okay, John, thank you. Chuck Broyles and Don, 
a first game situation, you always have more adjustments than other games in the season, don't you? Because it is the first game. Well, you have so much time to prepare for it. They're teams that have played each other before. They have a lot of film on each other. They, they thoroughly know each other. And uh, both teams are, are making adjustments after every series. And uh, an option team, a running football team like Pitt State, tough to be staring at a deficit like this at halftime. Yeah, when we coached, or talked to Coach Burrows, he told us, we're not a come-from-behind team. NDSU is not a big come-from-behind team because they don't throw the ball a lot. That's what they're looking at today, 28-3. to That'll be tough. But Pittsburgh State did show last year the comeback capability against Missouri Western. They trailed late in the game. They rallied from that one. And let us not forget that that playoff game in Pitt last year, with 10 minutes left in the game, the Bison led that game 31-20. to Pitt State was able to engineer a comeback in that game. Yeah, and I think there's a good chance that, uh, that Rocky Hager reminded the players of that, of uh, Pitt's come-from-behind <laughs> ability. So the Bison lead at 28-3. to here at the half, taking a look at the stats from the first half, North Dakota State had a big edge in rushing, 166 to 73, first downs 10 to 7, and actually there were two turnovers, one turnover in the first half, Sean Carlson's interception, but the stats really reflecting the first play here, or the play in the first half. Ludwig Milfors kicks it off, his kick is shallow, Chad Kling fields it at the 18-yard line. Kling across the 30. He's got some room. He's across the 40 and dragged down on the play by Ludwig Milfors, the kicker. A fine return by Chad Kling to open the second half. Ludwig made a, a great play. His mother came the longest distance to see this game. She came all the way from Sweden. She got in <laughs> Thursday night. <laughs> Gets to see her son kick off, kick extra points, and now make a tackle. Make a tackle. First American football game for his mother, Karin. And Ludwig, uh, from Sweden, was a foreign exchange student at Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Pitt State goes back to work offensively. Hutchins has Sean Scott and Joey Tobin split backs behind him. Hutchins gives the pitch to Tobin around the corner, and he picks up about five or six on the play, and there's a flag along the Pittsburgh State bench as I think we may have a late hit penalty coming against North Dakota State, and it is. The Bison were in position, just did not get the play made. They had uh, people in the right spot. Well, no doubt about it, Eric Hagerly delivered the hit on Tobin after he was well out of bounds. The second such penalty called on the Bison this game. And that'll give Pittsburgh State 15 more yards and move that ball inside the 35. So the Gorillas immediately here, in a matter of two plays, into Bison territory. Well, this is exactly what they need. They need a quick score. They got to get the offensive momentum going. Kling is wide to the right. Hutchins. Option. Now he pitches back to Scott, and the play is made nicely by Tim Jacobson on the corner, who stepped up and wrestled Sean Scott down. Tim Jacobson had to get off the block. They they have the flanker block him. He has to get off the block and make the tackle. This is a good football play. Jim Jacobson was really questionable for this football game until a couple of days ago. He was suffering from an Achilles tendon problem, and Eric Hagerly's also been banged up during preseason, but both of those guys have gone extensively tonight here for the Bison. A second and seven. Hutchins rolls out, looks downfield, cuts it up, and he's dragged down on the play. It is Bruce Yagi making the stop, had some help that time. Also defensively for the Bison was Chris Jones. This is pass run option. They want to pass the ball, they want to throw it, but if things aren't there, he's going to tuck it up and go. One thing to keep in mind as you watch PSU, how dominating this offense has been, they average about 350 yards a game rushing. And what, they have 70 in the first half? So the Bison have really done a great job defensively keeping their running attack in check. The only difference was a guy named Ronnie Moore last year. Big difference. Hutchins pitches to Scott. He's got some room, cuts it in, and hands the first down. Sean Scott inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. Gives Pitt State a first down. We'll give the Pitt uh, coaching staff credit. They did not panic. They are running basic, basic option football. You go back to your basics, don't you, Don, and, and start from there and try to execute those and build off those Yes, and they're, they're trying to get the ball in the hands of their great tailback. He's the fastest player in the field. They want him to handle the ball, and they're getting the ball in his hands. First and 10 for Pitt State at the Bison, 19. 
Scott had six rushes for 30 yards in that first half. Hutchins led Pitt State in rushing. This time inside handoff to Joey Tobin. He struggles his way for about two yards. That actually ended up being about a four-yard play, and this is exactly what Pitt has to do. They have to get something going on the inside just like this. Get three, get four yards on first down. This opens up their option offense. Chris Jones was in on the tackle for the Bison, a second and seven for Pitt State. Sparkman now in the inverted wishbone, the tight end. Now he goes in motion near side of the field. Hutchins pitches to Scott and he's bottled up. Eric Hagerly, Steve Marion, and also Chris Jones. Hagerly and Jones are the defenders to make the stop. And let's go to John Hegray. John. Thanks, Dan. I'm with Dr. Lee Christopherson. You had a chance to look at them all half. What is the status of Arden Beecher? Arden tore, uh, we call it the terrible triad, where he tore the medial collateral ligament, superficial and deep. It looks like he tore a meniscus in the knee, the inside cartilage, and he tore this, his anterior cruciate. It leaves the knee totally unstable, and he can't walk on it at all. We have to support it. We have to put it in braces and casts. What do you think? How long will he be out? Well, we have to do a reconstruction on his knee to, to put it back into uh, hopefully a good stable situation again. And these sometimes take several months, 10 months to a year to recover from. Now with the arthroscopic surgery, sometimes we're able to get him back sooner and he's got tremendous muscle tone, so I'm Real encouraged if anybody can come back for hopefully playoffs, Arden can. When will you have arthroscopic surgery done? He'll undergo surgery on Tuesday morning after uh, we, we've got him in a cold special machine now that's going to be flowing cold water over the knee and keeping the swelling down for us for the next uh, 48 hours. And then we can go in without any bleeding and hopefully uh, do a nice tight repair. Thanks a lot, Doctor. Thank you. Back up to you, Dan. Okay, John, the news not good for Arden Beachy. Some major knee damage. In the meantime, as you saw, Brian Hutchin connects with Michael Munt on a 16-yard scoring drive. Jeff Woods has added the extra point. As you see the replay, Hutchins hooking up with Munt in the touchdown. It looks like they, uh, whether well, zone defense or man-to-man, -man, eventually you play man-to-man, -man and they got the matchup that they wanted, the, the inside receiver running and swinging, just outran the strong safety. So Pitt State on the board again. The scoring drive, seven plays, 53 yards, and it took them just three minutes and 15 seconds, and it's 28-10. Big lift for the Gorillas right off the bat. Oh, a huge lift, and exactly what we were talking about. They have to score to get back in the ball game. They've got nearly a whole half of football to get on track and get going, and we could have a ball game yet, 28-10. Don, you know football injuries well. Arden Beachy is in very good shape, has great muscle tone, but from what Dr. Christofferson says, you're looking at a long time coming back, don't you think? Well, long rehab? It's, uh, well, like Dr. Christofferson said, it's going to be major re reconstruction in the... Uh, uh, and Dr. Christoffer will do a great job in surgery, and uh, there's just a lot of things that have to happen. And, uh, but it, it doesn't look good for this particular football season. The Bison fans now trying to get back into this game a little bit. They've been a little bit silenced ever since the Beachy injury, and now Pitt State silences them a bit with an early touchdown here in the third quarter. Jeff Wood to kick it off. Matt Ness, Carlson, and Miller. Carlson receives it at the 19, and he squeaks his way out to the 29-yard line. 10-yard return for Kyle Carlson. B.J. McGivern in the stop for Pittsburgh State. So Mike Gidley, number seven, who directed NDSU's final touchdown in the second quarter, takes over the Bison offense. Gidley, the true sophomore from Superior, Wisconsin, and Superior has been running that option for many, many years up there. Yes, and he does. I mean, he started a game last year. Now he's got that couple series under his belt, and we'll just be able to see how he responds now in the second half. The thing to remember, he's got a supporting cast. He doesn't have to do it by himself. Double tight end, split backs. T.R. McDonald to the near side for the Bison. Inside handoff to Carlson, and he's hit immediately by Andy Sweet. Carlson picked up about a yard on the play. Again, the Bison are going to try to run inside. They're going to 
that trap was effective for them in the first quarter. They're going to try to come back with it. They just they want to get that three to four yards and first down stay within their game plan. Those linebackers for Pitt State have been pretty active tonight. Andy Sweet, Cooper Harris, Brian Carson among them. Second and nine for the Bison now at the 29. Gidley pitches to Miller. Cuts inside and is out near the 35-yard line. Again, Andy Sweet and Chris Brown in defensively for Pitt State. Mike Gidley does what the option quarterback has to do. Pitch the ball when they give you the pitch. He does a great job. This is a, a big play for an option quarterback. They come with a secondary stunt, and he doesn't panic. Third and five for the Bison now. McDonald will be to the far side of the field. Double tight end, split backs. Miller and Carlson are the backs behind Mike Gidley. Gidley rolls out far side, looks downfield, looking for McDonald, and he's forced out of bounds, short of the first down. Pitt State showing some good, good defense there, coming up hard toward Mike Gidley. Andy Sweet, Chance Rudznick were there defensively for Pitt State along with Brian Carson. The timing on that play was just never off. The, the, the center snap, the quarterback's a little bit slow getting out. The, the receiver was open. The quarterback wasn't ready to throw. That, that play just, just was tough from the start. Tate Mosier in the punt for North Dakota State. Is this the first punt? For it the is. The first punt of the night. Mosier out of Mobridge, South Dakota, a walk-on in the Bison program. The senior high snap gets it down and just barely gets it off, and there's a flag back on the play. Munt fields it at the 26 up to the 27, but it's not going to matter because NDSU is going to get the ball back. Tate Mosier roughed up on the play. Cooper Harris, number 55, the linebacker, Hitting Tate Mosier late. That's just a situation the guy sees a high snap, thinks he can get in there, just a little over anxious and goes through and uh, unfortunately runs into the kicker for Pitt State. Automatic first down for the Bison. You know, Tate Mosier is an interesting guy. You talk about an all around athlete. Came out of Mobridge, South Dakota. He was a state champion wrestler there and he wrestled with Bucky Mon his first yep. two years and still played football. And Learned. finally this past winter, said to Bucky, I'm sorry, Bucky, I love your program, but I got to give it up for football. <laughs> if he was part of Bucky's wrestling program, he's mentally tough. <laughs> and Mosier, of course, into that starting role in that linebacker position because of Joe Tote's suspension and most recently his reinstatement. Joe Tote will return to the football team two weeks from today when the buys an open conference play. This is Tate Mosier's first start. He was a walk-on quarterback out of Mobridge. Well, it took him a while to get all that sorted out, but it is indeed. Well, the, the rules are very specific. The quarterback, the punter is protected unless you get a piece of the ball, and then it's open season. <laughs> Running into the kicker, five yards. That makes the first down. First of 10, ball of 40. Flag on the field. And the flag is still laying back at about the 18. First and 10, three backs now for the Bison. Gidley barking out the calls along the line of scrimmage. Gidley turns it up, hit initially and struggles for maybe a yard. Andy Sweet, wow, he's making a lot of plays right now. Number 50, Andy Sweet. And Sweet's a guy that started out on offense as a tight end. Gorilla switched him over to linebacker and he's done a pretty good job, pretty active out there making some big plays, plugging the holes. Game three. This is a, a lot of series are critical. This is a very important series for both teams. The attendance tonight, 18,059, short of a sellout because the student section at the south end didn't fill up as we had anticipated. Nonetheless, fine <laughs> dome open. More than 18,000 fans here to watch as the Bison lead at 28-10. Kyle Carlson wrapped up. Chance Rudznick in on the play to make the initial hit and again how sweet it is defensively for Pitt State Andy Sweet swarming on this series again they're reacting very well to the trap the pulling guard and getting the penetration and that is a 
it's been a tough play the last couple times the Bison have run that particular inside track. I'll tell you what, Pitt State has regrouped nicely since halftime. They've come out and done everything right on both sides of the football to this point of the third quarter. The Bison face a third and nine. Split backs behind Gidley. Three receivers set. Gidley down the line option. Gets away from one defender. Cuts up field and he has the first down. Mike Gidley just gets the first down inside the 50-yard line. Mike Gidley is playing his second football game. He started one game last year. This is as big a first down as he's had at North Dakota State. This was an awfully big play for this young quarterback. Watch and again, it. he breaks tackles. He broke a tackle there. Marcus Phillips, the linebacker, one of the stronger players on this team. And Gidley just broke away from him. First and 10 for the Bison to go to work just inside. He's calling the play at the line of scrimmage now. He's changing the play. Just inside Pitt State territory. 8.35 remaining third quarter. 28-10. North Dakota State. Jason Miller. Big hole. Nine yards on the pickup for Jason Miller. And Scott Fuchs, guys, delivered a big time block for Jason yeah, Miller. The, again, that left side of the offensive line coming through in the clutch. Look at the, mo look at the movement back. That's uh, tremendous offensive line play. Miller again showing that great burst of speed. All he needs is a little crack. Give him a little opening and he's going to make good things happen. The next four years could be fun around here for Jason Miller. He is definitely a bright prospect in this football program. 5,000 yards in his career at Monoma High School. Good to see those Monoma kids finally coming to NDSU. We had a hard time with that one last year. <laughs> you did. Sanchez to give up near the first down marker. Charlie Stock was another Manoman kid. Yeah, we finally we we finally started to get the Manoman kids. Charlie Stock and was he your recruiting class, yep. Don? Uh huh. He turned out to be a great linebacker at North Dakota. And State. Muck and Hearn. There you go, big Muck. And the Lavoys. I tell you, Ken Bauman's had a machine over there. They've won the last three. Minnesota State Class C championship. Well, you can understand why we want to <laughs> recruit those kids. They're very well coached. They'll measure for the first down here. And it looks like they're a just inches short. Inches short of the first down. No, BJ, he's got to hit the cat. Double tight end for the Bison. Kevin Holm and Eric Heismeyer, 89 and 88 respectively, are the tight end split backs Miller and Sanchez. And Gidley takes it himself, and he has the first down. Went right over the center, Brad Service on that play. Brad Service is a young man for Wisconsin. He was player of the year it's his senior year. His brother's a starting catcher for the Houston Astros. Uh, Brad had a very good football game tonight. Point out too the only underclassman amongst those offensive linemen returning from last year. Yep. The Bison have more depth along the offensive line than any other position on this football team, led by those four seniors and five starters. All five of those big guys coming back from a year ago. Gidley under center. Gets to Sanchez, cuts it off and gets about two yards, but that may have not gone nowhere had it not been for a nice block by Kevin Holm, the tight end. Yes. I'm really impressed with Kevin Holm. He's a, he's, he's a good blocker. He's a good tight end. He had a one on the play. The pit defense a little bit over anxious. The free safety overruns the ball a little bit. Second and nine from the Pitt State 38. Uh-oh. And a little early movement by the Bison. The play goes on. But the Bison had a little jump start that time. Chance Rudznick had some big time pressure and Mike Gidley as he rolled out. It's been a fairly quiet crowd throughout tonight. I've been a little surprised, actually. I thought this place was just going to explode tonight, and it never really reached the pitch that I thought it would. Yeah, I think the first five, ten minutes when the game starts, they get the nice drive going. People are excited, but you get up 20 points, and they kind of start talking and doing some other Illegal things. Illegal motion on the offense. Penalty is declined. It is third down. 
This is a tough down for any football team in America, and especially tough down for an option team. Third and eight. McDonald to the near side of the field. Larson to the far side. Sanchez and Miller split behind Gidley. 39 for the Bison. Six and a half minutes to play third quarter. They lead it 28-10. Gidley keeps it. Whoa! Brian Carson delivers a big time hit on Mike Gidley, shy of the first down. Great example of why <laughs> an option quarterback has to be a tough guy. You have to have mental and physical toughness to be a successful option quarterback. Brian Carson gives a little kiss on that play. Didn't leave any lipstick marks, but maybe a little red mark from the helmet. Yeah, Gidley's still feeling it, too. Look at him. Tate Gidley's Mosier in the punt for North Dakota State. Gidley's a great competitor. He can't wait to get back on the field. Bison will do more things with their special teams this year because of the fact that the effects, the weather effects, are taken out. He goes for the corner, and it's down at the one. Let's see if you notice there, Dan. Steve Hansen downs the Tate Moser punt at the one. PSU did not send a return man back on that punt. Bison get a nice pooch kick down it at the two-yard line. I can't believe they didn't have at least Even one guy back. Even if they had a man back, he wouldn't have feel that kick. You don't ever feel a kick inside the 10-yard line. So the Bison lead at 28-10, and we'll be back to the Fargo Dome right after this. It's the 93 closeout at Selling Motors. Factory rebates and selling discounts can save you up to $6,000 on Cadillacs, $4,000 on Olds, $3,000 on Pontiacs, $3,000 on GMC trucks, and $3,000 on Mazdas. Factory rebates and selling discounts. Selling out 93 with over 200 new cars. Huge savings and low down payments for qualified buyers. The 93 closeout at your automotive superstore for savings. Selling Motors, south of I-94, Moorhead. We've trusted our NODAC mutual insurance agent with our auto and our home. That same agent can help us with our most important investment of all, our future. You and I don't know what the future holds. That's why insurance, especially life insurance, is important to all of us. Our agents recommend a life insurance plan after getting to know you and your needs. Now we can handle our insurance needs through one agent in one location and with someone who knows our unique needs. Dan Hammer, Don Morton, Ed Kendall, John Hagry, live from the Fargo Dome. Five and a half minutes to play third quarter. Pitt starts out on their own one-yard line. Hutchins turns it up, and he gives his team a little breathing room as he picks up about six yards on the play, out to the eight. Wade Basons, number 54 in the stop for the Bison. Again, the... The Bison outside linebackers have a, a tremendous job to do with their tight ends. Their tight ends are such good blockers. There's a lot of pressure on the outside linebackers. And they've got to make, they've, they can't allow, they can't be get blown off the ball. Jabarco Gaines and Tobin. The pitch is to Jabarco Gaines. And that looked like a face mask, but there was no call. Israel Moses in on the play. They, it sure looked like he had his hand high up near the helmet in the face mask that time as he brought down Jabarco Gaines. The Pitt State fans, about 500 of them who made the trip, don't like it. Here's where, um, oh yeah, no doubt about it. He's Pitt, all over it. Pitt's lack of a passing game has hurt him a little bit. North Coast State secondary can really react to the run now. Bison got away with one there. Brings up a third and four, and the crowd comes alive. Hutchins. Pitches to Jabarco Gaines, and he is near the first down. Very close is Jabarco Gaines. Steve Hansen, along with Wade Basons and Chad Punzak, in defensively for the Bison. And this is going to be very close. It is a first down for Pitt State after the gain of four. You know, Gaines is a guy that made the squad as a walk-on, and Coach Broyles calls him their best overall back. Does yep. a lot of things well, blocks, a uh, good power runner inside, got a little speed. First and 10 at the 11. Hutchins drops back. It's picked off! Tate Moser inside the 20-yard line! 
the senior from Mobridge, South Dakota, picks it off and gives the Bison a great scoring opportunity here late in the third quarter. Now, Dan, you know what made that play happen? Eric Hegerly. Hutchins wanted to go deep. Hegerly with some great coverage, had the wideout covered, went to a secondary receiver, and you could tell he got some happy feet, kind of forced the throw. Credit Shane Hunfield, the secondary coach for the Bison. Those secondary people read pass right now. They've got some great keys on the uh, key in the offensive line of Pitt, and they were not fooled by that play-action pass. Well, I think they read pass to begin with, and from there on out, I think Tate Moser just kind of read the eyes and the motion of Brian Hutchins. He knew that ball was headed his way. Bison go to work at the 19 of Pitt State. Three backs. The give is to Jason Miller. He breaks two tackles. He rumbles inside the 10-yard line. Nearly a first down, and what a night Jason Miller is having in his first ever game in a Bison uniform. You talk about immediate impact. Again, the Bison's fastest running back shows good acceleration, breaks tackles, carries on that running back tradition that is so evident in North Dakota State. Miller's one of these guys, too, that about half the time he gets the ball, looks like he could be stopped for maybe no gain or a loss even, but turns it into a two, three, five, ten yard game as it was there. Miller carried for five times, 39 yards in the first half. He's the leading rusher to this point in the game for NDSU. Split back, double tied in for North Dakota State. Second and inches. And Eric Heismeyer on the left side, the tight end, jumped on that play for North Dakota State. It's still a game. It's a game played by young people. Not every play will be perfect. This, this is tough down here in Fort Ontario. The yardage is so Dead tough ball, to come by. False start on the offense. Replay second down. So instead of a second and inches, the Bison now faced with the second and five. But three downs to get it. Yep. Again, double tight end set for the Bison. McDonald to the near side of the field. Inside handoff, and who was that a collision? Chance Rudznick and Carlson really laid some pads into that play. You could hear it crack all the way up here. And let's go to John Hagrey. Down two plays ago, Raul Sanchez was a blocking back. He went into the line and took a pretty good hit. He did go off onto the NDSU Bison sideline. I'll update you and see how his condition is. Two down territory for the Bison. They have about three yards to go for the first down. They operate at the Pitt State 11-yard line. Three back set. Chris Long, number 23, a new running back in for the Bison. Gidley throws. Oh. He's got his man. That is T.R. McDonald for the first down. First and goal at the three for North Dakota State. Run pass, uh, pass run option. Wants to pass the ball first, the pass and there they're going to run. It's very well executed. Big play by the sophomore quarterback. McDonald adds a few more yards onto his assault for the all-time yard record which is currently held by Len Kretschmann. He needs about 500 yards to surpass, surpass that. Gidley cuts it in and he's stopped at about the one yard line. Again Andy Sweet in on the stop for Pitt State. One fifty-five to play here in the third quarter. We've mentioned this guy's name a lot Don. Andy Sweet. Yes, from the inside linebacker spot, he's got good speed, good ball sense. He's been around the ball a lot. But your inside linebackers have to be. If you're going to be a great defense team, your inside linebackers have to make plays. Andy Sweet at 6'2", 226-pound junior. Miller and Carlson are the backs. The Bison operate at the pit, too. Up and he's in for the touchdown. Kyle Carlson went up and over the top. And the Bison tack out another touchdown, and they lead it 34-10. Well, the Bison take advantage of that 
turnover after the Tate Mosier interception. They go five plays, 18 yards. Rob Highland, the hold. Ludwig Milfors with the extra point. He's perfect on the night. It's North Dakota State 35, Pitt State 10. Hey, we know you're busy and can't worry about the best time to buy a car, but here's a clue. The Jeep and Eagle Clearance, unlike any other because it's on great vehicles like Jeep Grand Cherokee or this award winner, Eagle Vision. And we're not shouting, but you get 500 bucks back on four-cylinder Jeep Wranglers and save up to eight on Jeep Cherokee Sport. So take a time out. You could save a lot of money here. The Jeep and Eagle Clearance, worth looking into. Hey, we'll see you there. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer today. Vince and Brenda Fuller aren't First Bank customers just because they have Checking Plus, which protects them from overdrafts, and Buyer Protection, which protects them from the unexpected. The Fullers are First Bank customers because at midnight, a banker helped them find their checking error and transfer funds to cover it, which protected them from a sleepless night. Kyle Carlson gives the Bison a 35-10 lead, scoring touchdowns, something that he's familiar with. Yeah, Kyle out of Dickinson, over 600 yards last year, and he's got a real nose for the end zone. Ten regular season touchdowns, finished with 12. In fact, he led the NCC in scoring last year. His brother Chris was in the Bison program for a few years. And I'll tell you, that, Dick, that Carlson family out of Dickinson has a lot of speed. They've had a great line of athletes out there. Well, Kyle averaged six yards to carry last year. That's, that's an awfully good average. The Bison fans on their feet. Ludwig Milfors to kick it off. Kling is back deep for Pittsburgh State. It's Kling at the three-yard line. Playing is brought down at the 25-yard line by a swarming Bison special team. There are some young people fly, uh, letting their bodies fly <laughs> out there. Special teams are for special people. I wasn't much of a football player in my day, but if I could have been, I would have been. I would have loved to have been a special team specialist. And you'd, you know? have, been a, you'd have been a great one. One of those guys that they <laughs> iso on. You know, they know a guy's going to make a play. They iso on him going down the field, fighting through a couple blockers, and just wailing on the guy. Get the oh. kids off the street. <laughs> Hutchins down the line, thinks about passing it, cuts it up now. <laughs> Eric Hagley drags him down at the 39, and we do have a penalty flag on the play. Motion penalty on Pitt State. And let's go to John Hagley. Thanks, John. Dan. I'm over on the Bison sideline. Now, Raul Sanchez has all of his top gear off. They are, Dr. Lee Christofferson is working on his left shoulder. So at this point, uh, not sure how long Raul Sanchez will be out, but they does have all of his uh, gear off and they are working on his left shoulder. Arden Beachy returning to the field and look at this, a standing ovation for Arden Beachy as he returns to the field. Well deserved. And getting back to that Sanchez injury, Raul Sanchez separated that shoulder about two and a half weeks ago. So I'm sure that's the same situation. Tobin here on the carry, and he's about to the 27-yard line. But there was some concern, as I said, a couple weeks ago about Raul Sanchez's status for this football game, but he improved greatly in the last week or so. Yes, it's, a, it's been a chronic problem. He dislocated two years ago. He heard it again a couple weeks ago. It's probably going to be something he'll have to just uh, live with this, this season. Yeah, something that'll probably tail him all year long. Second and seven for Pitt State at the NDSU 27. Hutchins running the option. Keeper, and he's dragged down on the play. A gain of about two yards. Chris Jones in on the stop for North Dakota State, and Israel Moses was there also. The wave, that's what you're hearing in the background. The folks are generating some sound with the wave. 
Pitt is trying to do the same thing, run the pass run option, but their lack of a running game does not make it nearly as effective. The situation doesn't make it nearly as effective. The, the Bison are taking control of the football game. End of three quarters here at the Fargo Dome, and the Bison have controlled from the opening snap. They lead it 35 to 10. Their offensive line set the turn early and set the tone early in this game. So when they enter the final 15 minutes of play, both these teams have next week off. And that they'll enjoy that rest. And we'll be back for the fourth quarter right after this. Buick, the car company that wrote the book on quality, closes the books on all remaining 93s. Skylark, a beautiful, sporty Buick, smart and sexy, loaded with automatic transmission, power door locks, anti-lock brakes, and an available V6 that moves. The way dealers are discounting Skylark, it's a Buick you can afford right now. Direct to you cashbacks and dealer discounts. Get into your nearest quality Buick dealer and save right now. Precision craftsmanship. It's usually found in the world's finest furniture. Or windows made by Pella. Windows so well crafted, so energy efficient. They don't just meet industry standards, but often exceed them substantially. Quality like this only comes from Pella. NDSU stuffs Pitt State on a third and long. David Mitchell to punt, and wow, that is a beautiful punt. Moses fields it at his own 32, gets away from one defender, and returns about five yards to the 37, but that was a boomer by David Mitchell. Yes, now, for 14... And let's go to John Hagrey. Thanks a lot, Dan. Joining me, Arden Beachy. I've been talking to him for a couple seconds. You say you're not in a lot of pain right now, so that's a little bit uh, good. But uh, tell me about what you remember about the play. I was looking downfield. I had to throw the top foot. I had a plan, and the guy just came in to tackle me low and just got a straight shot on the knee. Did you feel that the ball was already downfield? It was a little bit of a late hit or not? No, I couldn't tell. I was just focusing in on the pass, and uh, he hit me. And it happens a lot of times this time. It just my foot happened to be playing the right way, and that's the way the game goes, I guess. Coach Christopherson has said most likely out for the year. Would you come back and rehab and play again next year, or would you go to med school? No, this, this is my last year, and uh, it's time for, for me to move on. I mean, this may be a blessing in disguise. Who knows? But uh, Mike Gilly and Rob Highland have been working hard, and they, they can do the job. Arden, it's been a pleasure watching you over the past couple of years. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. We should point out Arden Beachy did redshirt as a freshman, as a true freshman, so this is his last go-around. That's what makes this doubly frustrating for him. He's a mature young man. He's handling this very, very well. Yes, he is. His parents are doing a great job. His brother is vying for the starting quarterback job at Concordia in Moorhead, Minnesota this year. And his sister, Jessica Beachy, was a great basketball player at Concordia. What a lot of athletes the Beachy family has had. Gidley, ridden down on the play. That time by B.J. McGivern. And he has stepped up to make a couple of stops in a row for Pitt State, a gain of less than one for the Bison. And here's what you have to do with this pass run option. Your linebackers, your inside linebackers, have to commit right now. They've got a, they've got these, they, they're getting hung in no man's land. That time he made the decision, he went after the quarterback, no hesitation, stopped the play. It's third and long for the Bison, third and 11. Three receivers set. Split backs behind Mike Gidley. Straight drop back. Big rush. Holy smokes. The blitz that time. And in on the play is Derek Blackburn. He had four sacks a year ago, and that's the first real all-out blitz that we've seen out of Pitt State tonight. I think there must have been an assignment there that uh, you're not supposed to come completely free like that. <laughs> you know, Gidley, too, on this play, he could have tried to force that ball in there. Maybe it would result in a turnover, but sometimes you just take the sack. You take the loss of yardage, kick it away, and let your defense go to work. That's right, especially the 25-point lead in 12 minutes to go in the game. <laughs> Tate Mosier to punt for North Dakota State. And he fumbles the snap. Mosier runs to the near sidelines. Punt it, punt it, punt it. He punts it away. Look at this. Unbelievable. Holy smokes. How about that for improvising? <laughs> wow. 
That's the play of the game in the fans' heart. Tate Mosier saw a little opening, and as you pointed out, Don, you set it on cue, punt the football. Mosier has made some things happen. He put him in position. This, this is a tremendous play. This You can't believe what this did for the time management of this football game. For him just to get this punt off and get it downfield a little bit. Won't help the wow. average much, but it's effective. Oh, That's I right. mean, that, that is just a great play by Tate Mosier. He has got his head on the right way tonight. Pitt State, instead of having it deep in the Bison territory, start out at their own 30 six yard line and Wade Basons in on the stop there when your punter's an athlete and obviously Mosier's an athlete he's a he's a good athlete they can do these kind of things John Dunbar back when I was at Northwest State was an athlete who could do these kind of things when you have the young man who just can punch sometimes they don't have the athlete play to make these kind of plays boy that, that's a good case in point there and a good comparison to Dunbar Split backs behind Hutchins. 11-20 to play here in the football game. NDSU leads 35-10. Hutchins rolls out. He's pressured. And Hutchins throws it away as both Rich Frazier and Steve Hansen were zeroing in for the sack. Again, the pass run option, lack of a running game. The linebackers the just committed right now to the quarterback. They didn't get caught in no man's land. That's what you got to do with this pass run option. Steve Hansen has thrown his hair back a little bit here in the second half and come pretty heavy on Hutchins a couple of times. Hansen led the team in sacks last year with seven. Got some third quarter numbers here. Total offense, the Bison just dominating this game as we've been talking about. 374 to 168. Not many teams do that to PSU. It's third and six for Pitt State. Hutchins drop, looks for a man, and that ball is under throwing. Israel Moses had great position on that play, would have been in position to pick that ball off had it been thrown a little higher. So it's fourth down for the Gorillas. And gosh, that, that possession is so critical to this stage of the game, as you pointed out, Don, in terms of clock management. Mosier being able to get that punt off, NDSU defense holds here in the Bison now, most likely go back to work offensively. Moses fields it at the 20 yard line. Breaks two tackles and struggles his way to the 27. Hard work by Israel Moses. The Bison lead 35 10. You're watching Bison Football on NBC. When you're in a hurry, not much time, you don't want to hassle with the checkout line, then get yourself together and just stop and go for the gas and the goodies, even the videos. Get a mug for the club and the coffee is free. And the rest is fast too, as you'll see. the 94 cats. See your dealer now before the new Arctic Cat snowmobiles and the fall deals are gone. Again, a great play by Tate Mosier to get this punt off. This prevented a touchdown and this allows the Bison to execute time management. They don't have to score. They don't have to make any big plays. They just have to use the clock. Every first down now takes two minutes. Yep. Yeah, at this point, you just don't want to give them an easy score. Under 11 minutes to play here at the Fargo Dome. North Dakota State has next week off. They will open the North Central Conference on September 18th against Nebraska Omaha here at the Fargo Dome. Then they'll play Morningside the following week here at the Dome. Three games to begin the season here at the Fargo Dome. I think this is a good move by the coaching staff. Give Rob Highland. This is a, still a critical part of the game. They have confidence in this. Is, they have two quarterbacks that they believe in. They're going to give this young man a chance. Rob Highland, number five, the freshman from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Gives the handoff to Chris Carlson, and he bangs his way for about 
two yards on the play. Andy Sweet again in defensively for Pitt State. Rob Bob is a great option quarterback in high school. He played for his dad, Bob Holland, at Spring St. Mary's. Tremendous football program. His dad, Bob, of course, was a great Bison player back in the 60s. This is invaluable experience for him, isn't it? Yes. These two young men are evidently very, very close. Highland inside handoff to Chris Long, seeing his first carry of the night. Long, the 5'8 sophomore from Sioux City, Iowa. I think I'm out of age, Bob. I think he probably played in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bob. Time flies, doesn't it, Don? <laughs> Third and fourth for the Bison. Under 10 minutes to play here for the Fargo home. It's been a big night for some of the young Bison. Jason Miller's had a tremendous night. Rob Gidley did a fine job spelling for the injured Arden Beachy. Now Rob Highland gets a chance. He's got Kevin home down the middle and a big pickup for the tight end inside the Pitt State 40. Play action pass. Called a dump pass. The tight end's going to very least like he's been blocking the strong safety all day. What a touch by this young quarterback. Perfectly thrown. Pick up a 28 yards on the play. Kevin Holmes had quite a night. He's, he's had a very impressive first ball game. First and 10 for MDSU at the Pitt State 37. Little misassignment there, miscommunication. Highland struggles though and gets five yards out of it. He paid for it, but he got five yards out of it. Misdirection, a <laughs> naked bootleg. <laughs> well, he says there's nobody there. It looks like Highland just turned the wrong way. Everybody else yes. went to his left. Oh, yeah, he went okay. the wrong way there. And sometimes that can be effective because uh, it definitely misdirection you miss the defense is reading the offense lineman and who was there but brian carson so he said a big time hello both to mike gidley and rob highland tonight but it's second and five and they're still in the game time nine and a half minutes to play highland down the line cuts it up for a gain of about two yards maybe defensive play that time by pitt state was made by number 44 carlos nevins this is a good drive for the Bison with, uh, with Rob Holland, their uh, redshirt freshman quarterback. Uh, uh, the game is definitely not over yet, but it's getting close. The, it's a pressure situation, and he's making things happen. Third and two for North Dakota State at the Pitt State 30-yard line. Two tight end for North Dakota State. McDonald, the receiver, to the near side of the field. Quarterback keeper. And Highland has the first down. And they ran right over the center. And Kevin Bloom now, who did such an outstanding job at the guard position on this series, has moved to center. And that's where the Bison ran that time. So Bloom, the 6'2", 283-pound senior, showing his versatility tonight. It's the fourth quarter, and those defense linemen for Pitt are very, very tired. The Bison offensive line has worn him down big time tonight. Miller this time stopped, and he's dropped for about a loss of a half a yard. Kevin Crane in on the stop for Pitt State. Well. I'll tell you what, guys, if these two teams go on to have successful seasons, there's a very good chance that they'll meet later in the playoffs with the regional alignments being that they are in both these teams in the Midwest region in Division II. These teams will be in the playoffs. Pitt <laughs> is a very, very good football team. They played a hot Bison team. Three backs behind Highland. Play action. Looks downfield for McDonald. It's picked off. Picked off by number 25 at the four-yard line. That's Philip Simmons. He continues to return it across the 45-yard line. A 41-yard return for Philip Simmons. That was just inexperience on Highland's part. Never should have thrown that ball. There were two defenders right on the receiver. Thought he could force it in there, but just couldn't do it. 
He's been having so, so, such success on this drive. He probably uh, just got a little anxious, and he'll learn. He's a intelligent young man. He'll learn. There weren't two guys there. There were four <laughs> guys on him. He had no chance to get that pass in there. Todd Hafter, number 14, quarterbacking Pitt State now. Hafter, the six-foot senior. He has a lot of experience because of the injuries that have been dealt to the quarterback position at Pitt State the last few years. Hafner rolls off far side, throws downfield, intended for Kling, but it went off his hands near the first down marker. The Bison are going to win this game. They're just not going to be able to substitute quite as freely as they would have probably liked. That's true because you look at the defensive personnel that they have out there right now, and that's mostly the front line defense for the Bison. There's such respect between these two coaching staffs. Well, there sure is, and I think uh, the story that really illustrates that is when Andrew Wilson, the son of the Pittsburgh State President, showed some interest in NDSU, and Rocky Hager called Chuck Broyles and said, there's a good possibility I want to recruit this guy. Is he, should we recruit him? Yeah. And yeah. Chuck Broyles said? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good athlete. That's not the first time where you go into the backyard of somebody else. Uh, Chad Stark is a great example of that, where North Dakota State plucked Chad Stark right out of the backyard of Brookings, South Dakota. It was a great move for North Dakota State, a great move for Chad. He had a brilliant career. He sure did. But it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, it's tough to go to school your dad's the president. Yeah, that's true. And Andrew Wilson was real blunt about that to us. Uh, his career would have, not, would have been magnified down there regardless of what have you done. Hafner passes incomplete for Kling. Moses was down in coverage for North Dakota State, and then I'll bring up a fourth down for Pitt State, and I'm sure at this juncture of the game, no use to really gamble. They'll punt it away. Now, this is the old... Uh, this isn't, but we saw him tonight earlier run what they call the swinging gate on their extra points. And all that does, that forces you, uh, your opponents to prepare for a lot of different options, a lot of different varieties off that swinging gate. Mitchell's punt is away. Moses lets it bounce inside the five, and it's into the end zone for the touchback. 5.29 to play in the game. North Dakota State 35, Pitt State 10. It's a little bit country where hot and cool connect. Eat. Cool treat at Dairy Queen. There's real country cooking at Dairy Queen. The chicken strip country basket, now only $2.99. Four golden strips of chicken, all white breast meat, moist and tender. Crispy fries, Texas toast, and country gravy. The Dairy Queen chicken strip country basket, just $2.99. Y'all drop in for lunch or dinner. Hot eat. Cool treat. We treat you right. The other day, these guys came to me and said, Kirby, how'd you like to be in a cross-training commercial for Nike? You wear the shoes, right? We could come film your workout. So I say to them, let me get this straight. You want to make a three-hour commercial? I think one of the things that Rocky Hager and his staff will take away from the football game tonight is the impressive showing of some of their youngsters like Jason Miller and Mike Gidley and now Rob Hyland. That's real encouraging. Yes, very encouraging for those young people to come through like that. And yet you can't say enough about the offensive line. Teacots, uh, Fuchs, Service, Bloom, Dave Rose. They just did a tremendous job up front. The Bison will take over at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. Miller and Carlson, the split backs behind Rob Hyland, double tight end for the Bison. Gidley, late pitch to Miller, and he busts his way to the 25-yard line. Brought down on the play that time by... Number 40, Tim Bradbury, and we haven't heard a lot out of Bradbury tonight defensively for Pitt State. This is a nice play by the option quarterback. Gets the, thought he's going to tuck the ball away, then at the last minute does get to the pitch. Very well done. 
Ends up being a pickup of five for Jason Miller, who tacks on to his rushing yardage tonight. And what a debut it's been. His first game in a Bison uniform after an outstanding career at Monoman. Scored NDSU's first touchdown of the night. Chad Desjardins, number 30, into the game, and he takes the handoff for a gain of about two. And this is another promising freshman for North Dakota State. Desjardins, well, he's huge. Let's put it that way. Out of Breckenridge, <laughs> Minnesota, 5'11", 220 pounds. And if, I'm sorry, if I want to have a body, I'd take Chad <laughs> Desjardins. <laughs> he is a specimen. All-state football player at Breckenridge. Uh, finished second in a national weightlifting competition. There's always a place for big running back in the offense. He is a big one. Highland keeper this time. And first he has down. the first down up to the 32-yard line. So we're at the four-minute mark here. And NDSU just grinding out the clock with that relentless ground game. Well, I, I would hope the NSU coaches are coming down on the press box and enjoy the sidelines. This is the fun part of the game. Under four minutes to go, you've got the game won. Come down, smell the roses, enjoy the game, talk to the players, laugh, joke. Hey, Don, what was, this is a tough question, but the most memorable game you coached in your tenure at North Dakota State? There were so many, but I think the, the Cal Davis semifinal game in 83. Highland fumbles the ball, and it's recovered. Chris Long recovers for North Dakota State. It was nearly recovered that time by Tony Hutton, the defensive lineman for Pitt State, but Long does save it for North Dakota State. 1983, Davis, California. Ken O'Brien is the quarterback for Cal Davis. That was, no, that was 82. That was 82. 82. The year after that, you defeated Cal Davis. Yes, on their field. We took our horse and buggy offense. <laughs> took the stagecoach out. You know, that was, the, that was the big rivalry at that juncture, North Dakota State and Cal Davis, once you got to the playoffs. You played a, in, a, in a succession of years that really established the rivalry between those two teams. Very similar to, to this rivalry tonight between Pitt State and North Dakota State. The rivalry Here's a changes, good look at the old coach, Don Morton, and Ed Kendall, the sports director at KFYR, and high atop the Fargo Dome here. It's a fun building. Kelly Arts makes the reception at the 23. Nice grab by Kelly Arts out of Ampler, North Dakota. A 5'869 pound freshman. Hammer must be calling the plays now. <laughs> Why Hammer do you say Schmidt. that? Hammer Schmidt. Hammer Schmidt. <laughs> Dale Hammer Schmidt, that is. Why do you say that, Don? Throwing the ball like that. <laughs> No, they're just, they're going to have fun, and they should. These kids, they've worked hard. The coaching staff has worked hard. And this is a well-deserved victory for everybody. Chris Long now with a lot of room up the middle. And he breaks it out to the 33-yard line. Well, both these teams have been strong in season openers. Yeah, PSU, in fact, has an 11-game season opening winning streak going, but obviously that is about to end tonight. You know, I can remember the last time that, that an NDSU season opener was pegged as the game of the year in Division II. It was 1990 when Indiana of Pennsylvania, with Tony Alucci, the quarterback, came to Dakota Field. The Bison beat Indiana in that game, and they played later that year in Florence, Alabama for the Division II championship, and the Bison won that game. Mosier with the punt. You know, I think Don Larson has to be very proud of his defensive line tonight. They, uh, they sure grew up in hurry. They and sure did. With some young people. Let's break away. There's a minute 25 left in the game, and the Bison are rolling to a season opening win. In the next 24 hours, more people will buy a new Ford Taurus than any other car. World-class quality and design made Taurus America's best-selling car. Plus, a driver's airbag, available passenger airbag, and four-wheel anti-lock brakes make safety our top priority. 
and just announced a special factory authorized clearance bonus on Taurus. How will you spend the next 24 hours? If you're like many, you'll spend them at the Ford factory authorized clearance. Going on now at your local Northland Ford dealer. Remember the rules of the road, Andy said, as we steer towards Music City, USA. Keep plenty of the old mill up top and a real hit-kicking compilation of the country's greatest in the deck. Music so good, you'll forget the dials on the dash. The one thing about being out in the country, you never run out of folks willing to lend a hand. You boys need a ride. And just as long as you don't run dry of the old Milwaukee, it doesn't get any better than this. For a chance at 10 of the country's greatest hits, some hit-kicking music, check out an old Milwaukee display. Well, it's been a big thrill bringing you the Bison Dome opener and season opener across the entire state of North Dakota, parts of Montana, Minnesota, South Dakota. This game also being seen in Kansas. After the quarterback now turns it up across the 30 to the 35-yard line. So Todd Hafner does a fine job, keeper on the option for a first down. Both teams are substituting. Here's a trivia for you. Tonight was the first time in decades that the Bison started two North Dakota natives at inside linebacker. Go back huh. and find out when the last time that happened. Oh, How long is that? Do you, you have the answer to that trivia question <laughs> there, Coach? No, I don't. <laughs> Chris Jones from Minot, North Dakota, and Wade Basons from Beulah, North Dakota. Yep. The inside linebackers. Wade's dad, Wayne, was a member of the 65 team. Chris Jones from Minot Ryan, as you said. Move from strong, strong safety. This was his first start tonight. 109 to play here for the Fargo Dome. We had a crowd of better than 18,000 to begin the game. A lot of those fans have filed their way out, trying to beat the traffic. After gives to Jabarco Gaines. He's got a huge hole inside the Bison 40, inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. 26-yard gain by Jabarco Gaines. Good name for a running back. You know, the Pitt scored 10 points tonight. I think that's a tremendous credit to Little Ring and his uh -oh. defensive staff. They really did a great job getting ready for this game. Made great adjustments during the game. That reception hauled in by Chris Wilkerson. Yeah, this Pitt State offense... Uh, for many, many years has been a high-octane offense. Uh, to hold the Gorillas to 10 is something that you have to feel real good about. It's Donna, a real ringy. Donna, Chuck Gorillas, what do you tell your team after a game like this? Two highly-ranked squads and you get blown out. Well, you just, uh, obviously, you tell them that this this game is history. It's over. We're going to learn from mistakes and we're going to we're going to be a better football team and there's a lot of season left and we're going to beat, the, we're going to meet the Bison again in the playoffs. Get, get ready, strap it on, man. We're going back to work. After pitches to Ed Fairchild, his first carry tonight. Fairchild, touchdown. Ed Fairchild, the junior college transfer from Illinois, scores a touchdown. And I'll tell you what, this guy. He did, he did not go through yards. spring football. He just he's a junior college transfer. Just came in the fall. They felt he needed more time. He's got a bright, bright future. He'll be a definite factor for them. This is a nice run. Beautiful run. As you look at Jabarco Gaines, the Bison have another injury to contend with, and that is Israel Moses, who is down on the far sidelines at about the 10-yard line. You know, I think Coach Broyles kind of took us all by surprise when he told us today, by the third, fourth, fifth game, he expected this guy to challenge for the number one job. Well, I'll tell you, that run was a big-time run. That was. Right there. He showed balance. He showed acceleration. Ran with his pads low. The swinging gate. We mentioned it to you as we take a look at Israel Moses now, who's being tended and to what on this, the Bison sideline. What this does for your opponent, they have to spend practice time working on this because there's so many things that you can do from the swinging gate if the team hasn't prepared. And you've just got to match up basically numbers. And if we can get a look at the set of Pittsburgh State, well, we can show what the swinging gate is but first let's look at the injury to Israel Moses I would say he got the wind knocked out of him he looks okay he's uh, 
heading to the sidelines under his own power. But if we can get a wide shot here and show you what this swinging gate is. Well, that the time they used one of their options. They went for the two, but NDSU denies the two. So with 43 seconds left, the Bison lead at 35-16. ABC Seamless Siding is leapfrogging its competition. This is the company that has developed the slogan, the siding without the quacks. How does ABC Seamless eliminate all those quacks? I mean cracks, gaps, laps, you know what I mean. Well folks, the solution can be found in that incredible machine they call the ABC Seamless Siding Machine. What do ABC Seamless loyal customers think about the elimination of cracks in their siding? We always wanted to have a house that was maintenance free, so when we started looking at housing, we looked at getting ABC Seamless for the fact that we're done with it. We never have to do any painting, trim work, or anything, and it looks good. It's got a good warranty, and I know they'll stand behind it. ABC Seamless Siding comes with a variety of features not available from other companies, and it comes with the best warranty in the industry. Find out how you can beautify your home and eliminate those painting chores and save hundreds of dollars now on ABC Seamless Siding. No splices or gaps. The siding without the quacks. There you see the score with just 43 seconds remaining. 35-16 Bison. They've dominated this football game on both sides of the football tonight. I think we're going to see an onside kick. Well, it's a blooper. Chris Long fields it at the 43. And if that would have been Harry Carey, he would have said, hey, pop that off. <laughs> you know, that's a smart play by Long, too. A lot of people may not realize you can fair catch a kickoff rather than risk getting drilled and coughing the ball up. St stuck his arm up right yeah. away. Good instincts. I think you'll see a dive play. You won't see the ball in the air. You won't <laughs> see the ball pitch. <laughs> Those could be the three safest comments we've heard all night. <laughs> I'm going to go out on the limb. The fair catch by Long. Good heads up play. Bison line up tight now. Oh. And that's the game plan there. They didn't throw to McDonald deep on that play. Huh. You know, Don, you played in a lot of different stadiums. Your impressions of the Fargo Dome? I think it's as nice a stadium as I've ever played in. Uh, when the Metrodome, the Houston Astrodome, this is a very nice facility and uh, a tremendous credit to the people of Fargo to have the vision to build something like this. It's cozy, too. The fans are all pretty close to the field. It's a great place to watch a football game. You're close enough. You can see there's not a bad seat in here. Someone really had some vision. When I was back at North Dakota State, Goose Johnson used to have that kind of vision. I don't yeah. know how involved he was in this. I know Ed Draper was involved and some people like that, but uh, my hat's off to him. Tremendous job. And it is a successful dome opener. The Bison open the season and open the Fargo Dome era with a convincing 35-16 win over Pitt State. The NDSU dominated along both lines of scrimmage tonight. Having their way running the football and shutting down what is usually a high-powered Pitt State offense. You know, a couple of the things the players were saying about playing in the Fargo Dome was that this particular turf is much stickier than the Dakota Field turf. And also they noticed after they had been here for a while, they, they had to make a breathing adjustment. They said it was a little difficult to get their breath at times. But those are adjustments I think that these guys will have to make as they play more and more games at the Fargo Dome. And let's go to John Hagry. John, go ahead. Thanks, Dan. Well, the hype's all over. The game's all over, Coach. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you on the victory. Uh, your impressions, Coach? Well, we played pretty well up front, and there are a couple of things that we were able to do. Say, uh, Pittsburgh State's a very good football team, and, and we were just sharp. They're, they're, you know, after the, uh, the pill that we had to swallow last year in the playoffs, our guys are very inspired. And they're a good football team. I don't want to take anything away from them. Yeah, I think they're going to be awful tough as the season goes along. You had a lot of people come in and fill in in spots tonight. You looked at both quarterbacks. I thought both of them played pretty well. 
Yeah, we made some pretty good decisions with those pups. Uh, hopefully we can get those guys to grow up into being big dogs soon. Uh, sounds like Arden's done for, you know, more than a few days. Okay, and Raul Sanchez has dislocated that shoulder many times. He came out of the game late. He'll probably be ready for next game. I uh, don't know. I haven't had a chance to talk with either Doc or, or Scott. Doc Christofferson will have to be the one who decides that. And, you know, if Raul is able to endure it, then that's what we'll have to go with. What about defensively, then? Uh, were you pleased with what happened on that side of the ball? You know, I don't get to see an awful lot of that, being that we're X and O with the offense, but there were some real nice plays made, and, and we really think that there are some good things that we were able to see from some young guys. Uh, yeah, we made some mistakes down the stretch, but young players will do that. And uh, if you don't give them an opportunity, they'll never learn and they'll never get a chance to, to do it right when they get on the game field again. So you know, we are not happy about the, the final touchdown. You know, Pittsburgh executed, and that's good. Are you pleased with uh, going up against a high-quality team like Pittsburgh State right off the bat? Will you try to do this again? Yeah, I think that's just something that we both have the same philosophy. We're going to play somebody tough and, and find out what we got to work on. I know they'll be a lot better when things get out the final final day here in the season. Congratulations, Rocky. Uh, rest for a little while and relax. We will. You about, get in the about, boat. about a day, right? Yeah. We'll <laughs> see you later. Thanks. Okay, Rocky. Thanks. Check. Okay, John. Thank you very much. Don, one question. You lose your starting quarterback. Is there a different concentration level that's needed by everybody back on practice Monday? Well, everybody has to uh, rise to the occasion, and that's the, the great thing about a team sport. It is a team sport. It's not an individual sport. You have to have the supporting cast, and those young quarterbacks coming in do have a great supporting cast. Okay, let's go to John Hager. He's with uh, Pitt State head coach Chuck Broyles. Thanks, Dan. Chuck, uh, hard fought football game. You came up a little short, but your impressions of the game? Our impression of the game is uh, we didn't play very well. You know, we committed some uh, blunders that that we don't like to do. We probably jumped off sides or had motion. We can blame it on the crowd noise, but a lot of it's just, you know, mental. We're, we're, we're very ready to play the game in, in some phases of the game. But on the other hand, uh, Brian Hutch is not going to play a game as, as poor as he played tonight. He didn't throw the ball very well. We gave him uh, two easy scores with interception, and then we gave him one with a bad snap on the punt. So all in all, we'll, uh, as coaches, we'll find some way to make something good out of this. You know, we got to play a lot of people. We had some kids that had Cher Fairchild scored a touchdown. Uh, our second team quarterback, Todd Hafner, came in. We've got some people that will hit you on defense. We'll get them regrouped, and we'll be a good football team before it's all over. We've alluded to the fact that you're still both in the Midwest Regional, and uh, you know, who knows, this who team knows? could, uh, right. could meet, meet up again. That's right, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get the opportunity to play, whether it's uh, North Dakota State again, someone from this region again about, what, 10, 11, 12 weeks down the road. I asked Rocky Hager about playing a tough team right off the bat like this. Would you do this again next year? Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't make any difference who we play. We've played Arkansas State, East Texas State, and, uh, you know, it's hard to find games. And so uh, early in the year, and Rocky has the same problem we do. People don't want to play you sometimes. <laughs> thanks a lot, right, Chuck. You've been you. great. Back up to Dan. Okay, thanks, John. As you might expect, in a head coaching position, you always trick Try to take the positives from any game and then apply those to the next couple of weeks. And Chuck Bro is doing that here tonight. We'll be back with more of the post-game sh post show from the Fargo Dome right after this. When we had Miranda, I realized how important it was to have solid life insurance plans. Because Mark and I both contribute to her financial security, we wanted the best coverage possible. That's why we called our NODAC mutual agent. The same agent we've trusted with our home and auto insurance helped us with our most important investment of all, her future. NODAC mutual, to help plan for a secure future. How about a burger, baby? I don't want no burger. I sat down with clown today. Buy any foot long in 22 ounce soft drink after 4 p.m. and get a second foot long for 99 cents. Well, let's recap the highlights from the second half. And Pitt State uh, came out strong, both defensively and offensively in the first half, and struck early on a touchdown pass to Michael Munt. Yeah, they, uh, I think they caught the, I think they caught North Coast State in, in a secondary blitz and man coverage and just a foot race, and Pitt State won the foot race. Michael Munt, of course, the transfer student from the Columbia University in New York. 
And uh, Chuck Broyles likes what he'll do to this football team. NDSU responded with a touchdown of its own. Nothing fancy here. Kyle Carlson just up and over for the touchdown. One of the plays that a lot of people will remember from this dome opener was turned in by punter Tate Mosier. Very smart play here to bail out of what could have been big problems for the Bison. Yes, this is a gifted athlete making a big play in a big game. And this allowed the Bison to use the clock and to, not, and to use the time management. This is a very important play. You know, if Pitt State would have had possession deep in NDSU territory, they probably would have tagged some would have score on the board. Instead, NDSU holds them on the next series and got the ball back. The then Bison we, were still going to win, yep. but it would have been a little closer game and people would have stayed and eaten more concessions. We saw a preview of a guy that Chuck Roy Broyles is real high on late in the game, and that's junior college transfer Ed Fairchild. Yeah, and the coaching staff here hasn't seen a lot of this guy. As Don said, he arrived with the team after spring ball. He's a transfer, and he showed us some great, uh, great burst there by uh, getting to the end zone. Got some final numbers here. Total yardage, the Bison, as we said, dominated the game. 322 yards, 239 for PSU. Uh, first downs, 15-17, NDSU winning there. Leading rusher for the Bison was Miller, 10 carries, 63 yards, and T.R. McDonald, a couple big catches for 46 yards, so he continues to look great. Bison led it 28-3 at the half, and really the game was in hand early with the way the Bison offensive line was performing against Pitt State. Take a break now, and we'll return to the Fargo Dome right after this. There really are only two types of free checking. Commonly free and community free. Commonly free checking can be found virtually anywhere. Very, very common. Community free checking with great free features and the best in community banking is available only here at Community First National Bank of Fargo. Of the two, we recommend the free checking that's less common and more community. Community free checking from Community First National Bank of Fargo. Member FDIC. In the next 30 seconds, more people will buy Ford cars and trucks than any other. It's a fact. World-class quality is why five of the top ten bestsellers in America are Fords. Like America's best-selling car, the Ford Taurus, now with up to 2,000 in savings. Or America's best-selling truck, the Ford F-Series, with up to 1,800 in savings. All of our best-sellers have big savings because it's Ford factory-authorized clearance time. How will you spend the next 30 seconds? If you're like many Americans, you'll spend them driving a new Ford. See your Northland Ford dealer today. Well, the play of the game was Arden Beach. He played so well early and then unfortunately went down with this knee injury late in the second quarter. And uh, he'll definitely miss a large part of this season the way it sounds. He's done. Uh, it, unfortunately, this is a very uh, devastating injury, but he's a mature young man and he's got a great life to look forward to. And Dr. Chris Austin's main concern right now is so let's, let's make sure the young man can lead a, a nice, healthy, normal life. And he will. Arden Beach, he, before he left the game, turned in some... Big numbers, numbers enough to be named the player of the game. 61 yards rushing, a couple of touchdowns in the night, three or four passing for 57 yards, and uh, the six foot from Staples, Minnesota, has a lot of great memories here at NDSU to take with him. Yeah, he sure does, and tonight, uh, great memories by that offensive line once again to recap. I think you or I could have played quarterback tonight, Dan, and they would have won this football game because Kevin Bloom and company just did a tremendous job blowing open holes and just dominating the football game from the start. Rocky Hager and Chuck Broyles meet at the field, and who knows, they may meet later. I hope we meet all of you later for another Bison football game. This has been a ton of fun for Ed Kendall and Don Morton. Don, thanks for coming back to Fargo, helping us out. It was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Uh, John Love did a great job with the broadcast, and I'm sure you, you highlighted Bison football the way it should be. Hope all